Hey everybody, Amna Navaz here in New York. It is August 21st, 2017. The Great American Eclipse is finally here. Stay with us here in just 45 minutes. We're going to show you everything live, the best views from around the country. We have people spread out across the whole place. Stay with us here. Even if you couldn't make it to the path of totality, don't worry, we got you. Here with me in New York, Mr. Walt Hickey. How you doing? I'm great. It's, <laughs> it's, we've been looking forward to this day for years. <laughs> How many of those here. years? Uh, they predicted the first eclipses like in the Greek time, so we're Gucci, but it's still, it is here. <laughs> the great Ameri American eclipse. It's gonna stretch coast to coast. First time since the 70s. It's a real exciting time. It's excellent. You guys stay with us here. We're gonna have live picture all over the place. Let's kick it off in the most appropriate place over in Oregon in Lincoln Beach. This is the place it's going to first make landfall. Rob Marciano joins us live from Oregon right now. Rob, what is the deal, man? What's going on there? I tell you, the mood of the folks here had changed dramatically in the last 30 minutes. Right around 9 o'clock, 9.05, 9.04, is when the partial eclipse began here in Lincoln Beach, Lincoln City, Oregon. And uh, that just then is when the clouds broke. You see the ocean wow. behind me, you see that cloud bank? Uh, that's, that's where the clouds are, but they broke. I wanna show you if we can switch to the camera that has a special, special solar filter on it. You can see from about the one o'clock uh, area of the dial on the sun, just how much of the, a chunk of the sun the, uh, the moon is already taken out and it, we constantly have to move our camera. This is a, a very dynamic process. And to look up at it, uh, I've got my solar sunglasses, of course. When you look at it, uh, you see what we're, we're showing you on that specialized lens. It is absolutely awe-inspiring. And this is only the partial part of the eclipse. So that means that everybody in America will get a piece of this action as long as you have somewhat clear skies. So get out there with these special glasses and check them out. Hey, uh, do, you have, do I have time to show you one thing? Yes, Speaking please, of uh, safety, Willie and Suzanne, come, come on over here. I caught these guys in the parking lot and they, were, they had their, their, their boxes up yeah. to their eyes. You guys just went to the store and made this. Um, and, and, and it's working, isn't it? Yeah, it's working. Now, Willie's mom, um, no longer with us, but she was a physicist and yes. obviously had inspired your interest in this and in other things. Uh, she's with us today, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. So how's your box? This is an A6 uh, a box. You did what? You put a, a little piece. Then you can see the, a little tiny sun in there. Now, it's, it, it works. I mean, it's not quite as dramatic as using these sunglasses, but they have both, and they, were, they just did it as a hobby. So this is just exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, have you ever seen one of these before? In 79? A, par a partial one. Yeah, partial. I think we missed the 79. I don't know what happened. Where we were. Okay. <laughs> well, look, the clouds are starting to come back in, so get your glasses on and check it out again. I don't want anybody to, to miss any part of this happening because it is very fickle here on the Oregon coast, the first point of contact of the great American eclipse happening right now. And uh, obviously, we're, we're a little bit excited to share it with you. Hope, hope you uh, get a piece of it as well, guys. And we are excited to witness it back here. Rob Marciano out there in Oregon. And then guys, stay with us here too because Walt Hickey's going to give us a little demo for how everybody out there at home can make their own <laughs> little viewing box if you want to. Hey, from the very beginning of the eclipse to the very end, let's head over to Charleston, South Carolina. David Muir is live there now. He's going to be anchoring a two-hour network special starting very, very shortly. And that is where the eclipse will leave America. David, what's the scene there right now? You know, Amna and Walter, this is so incredibly exciting. And as you mentioned, South Carolina is at the end of that sort of ribbon, that 70 mile ribbon that's going to go clear across the country. You know, I was saying on Good Morning America that if you have a, a sort of a marker on a map and you start up in Oregon and you just draw diagonally across the map, that is going to be the path of this uh, this moment, this moon shadow, if you will, totality across the country, 14 states. And the numbers are really fun. 12.2 million Americans in the path of totality and then another 200 million Americans are within a day's drive, which explains why in some places like uh, Madras, Oregon, they haven't had a room available in months. And in fact, <laughs> I think there was one that came on a couple of weeks ago, $1,400 a night for the days in. What? Wow. So anyway, no. people are really interested. That is incredible. We always, they say it's going to be the most watched, most tweeted, most shared eclipse in American history. Uh, David Muir out there at the end of the eclipse for us. And stay with us here. He's going to be anchoring a two-hour special starting very, very shortly. David, how are the skies looking, though? You have clear skies so far? 
You know what, we have a mix here, and you know we're staying on top of the People's Building here in, in Charleston, and the woman who's letting us use her place here promises me, she said, you know, I have good luck. So I have a feeling, listen, it's gonna get really dark and we're gonna witness a dramatic yeah. change here. And, and we will have seen what happens across the entire country. So I'm happy with anything, to be honest. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> geeking out. This is like middle school all over again, only we get to do this all on television. And as you point out, it's trending. You know, obviously the solar eclipse is trending, but total eclipse of the heart is trending right afterward. And it's the number one song on iTunes again. Go Bonnie Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> good for Bonnie Tyler. She's got that comeback. <laughs> David Muir, thanks so I much know. for joining us. We'll see you shortly. Bonnie Tyler, man, making a comeback. Total 1983. Bliss. So good. Why not? Why not? Um, what do you say we head back out now to Idaho? Yeah. Sun Valley. Olivia Smith is out there live for us now. I think on the top of a mountain. Wow. Good grief. Lady, what's going on there? Hey there. Yeah, we're on top of Bald Mountain here in Sun Valley. We're more than 9,000 feet up. We took a chairlift to get up here, and the chairlift is actually very well known in Sun Valley because that's where it was invented. And that's how most of these people got up here today, taking a gondola to a chairlift, some people even hiking up here. And it's a great scene. The weather is great. It's almost like the sun knows it's going to be eclipsed because it's very hot out here. We were up here at this time yesterday, and it was not this warm. So that's great. And I'm going to introduce Bev over here. She came from Seattle. Bev, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. So Bev, I think, has something very cool here, very unique. She Friends. made she yes, she made her own homemade goodie bags. I did, I did. I included the little Luna bar and and um, eclipse gum <laughs> and epic salmon. Epic salmon. It's an epic time. And of course, honey peanut butter because I'm here with my honey. Aww. And I'm really nuts about being here. And then nuts about being here, love that one. <laughs> the moon pie and Starburst and Milky Ways. This and so I, oh Olivia. my gosh, I almost forgot. Sky vodka. Hey. <laughs> nice. Olivia, Idaho's got 1.5 million people in it normally. Something like a half million folks are gonna show up to that state. How how have the conditions been? Is it crowded out there? The conditions here, so on this mountain, they sold more than 1,100 tickets, so it is limited. Wow. Again, people do have the option to hike up here if they want, but again, it is a pretty steep hike that actually the mountain's very well known for being steep. So from the bottom, you might look and think that's not an extremely tall mountain compared to others in America, but it is challenging once you get up here. So in Sun Valley itself, down on the ground, not terribly crowded. I think most people have been camped out outside of it. Um, and then coming up to this event, they do have limited tickets and those tickets were sold out. So we feel very lucky to be up here. Bev, how, how about you? How far in advance did you buy your tickets? Oh, um, about five months ago. Wow. And last night I slept out in a camper van in Warm Springs so that I was close. Wait, 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 wait. We were first in line for the chairlift this morning. <laughs> My husband thought I was crazy, but he loves it because all of our friends are here with us. So, yes. Bev was prepared. She prepared almost... Yeah, so fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Thank Bev. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and thanks, guys. All right, Olivia Smith out there in Idaho. We'll check back in with her in a bit. Back over to the East Coast now. Rachel Scott is live from Columbia, South Carolina, a little further inland than our colleague David Muir. And she's in a stadium. She is going to be with an incredibly big crowd there. Rachel, what's going on where you are? Hey Omna, hey Wild, how's it going guys? I can tell you things are very hot here, but the solar eclipse celebration is getting started with a very few simple words. Let's play ball. And that's because as you can see, the Columbia Fireflies are getting ready to face off against the Rome Braves today. But of course, it is not all about baseball today as much as it is the solar eclipse. And I want to show you guys the players are going to be wearing these really cool jerseys. And yes, they glow in the dark on the and well, I mean, how cool is that? They're going full throttle here. And they gave me this one that I can wear. They're going to be auctioning these off for charity. But there are going to be 9,000 people packing the stands here. And I want to introduce you to some of those folks. So come on, let's go meet some of the people that are here. All right, I want to introduce you to Joey, who is here. And you are, and as, as you can see, people are still filing in. The game is going to be starting at 105 here. But Joey, you saw a, a partial eclipse before. 
Yeah, I saw one back in about 1984, and uh, I was in middle school, and it was uh, kind of something we didn't really plan on, but they, they got us in a few days before the event and got us uh, into the classroom. We made smoke glass prepared at the last second, and then we did get to go outside when it happened and uh, enjoy it. And that always stuck in my mind uh, since that time. I said, I can't miss this one. So I took the day off and brought the family out, and I said, this is going to be big for my kids, and uh, they'll enjoy it just the same as I did. So you couldn't miss that one. Now you're here with your entire family. Go ahead and say hello, guys. You guys are live on ABC. Go ahead and give us a little wave. How excited are you to see the Solar Eclipse today? <laughs> We're for it to be right here. Out of all, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Well, at least you do have the day off from school because all the public schools did push their school back one day. So hey, at least it's a day off that you can sit and relax and watch some baseball, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, so where are the eclipse glasses? Show us the eclipse glasses. The stadium did pass them out today, so they're all ready to go. And I do want to introduce you to one last one because you also have seen a partial eclipse as well. Right, I was in the fourth grade in elementary school, and they we made smoke glass, had cardboard, and they took us outside, and for a split second, we could look at it and go right back home. Yeah. So this is the lucky family. I'm going to sit next to them because I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the clouds disappear and that we're able to see that full totality here on Moonwalk. We are keeping our fingers crossed yeah. for you, Rachel. Hopefully those clouds will part. You can enjoy it with that crowd there. Rachel Scott live there in South Carolina. Now let's head over to Missouri. I told you guys we had you covered here, yeah. literally across the entire country. Coast to coast. Brad Milkey joins us from St. Joseph, Missouri. Brad, my man, what's happening out there? Hey, you guys, I am here in St. Joseph's at an airfield, and you can see behind me RVs. These have been here for days, you guys. The campground over there here throughout the weekend, 20,000 people here because this is not just in that 70-mile band of totality that's stretching across the country. We are smack dab in the center between that and the highways around here. That means the people from Maine to Florida to Texas all decided to come right here to St. Joe. All right, we're going to check back in with Brad in just a second. Let's hop over to Nebraska now. Nick Watt joins us live. Okay. Nick, what is the scene out there? Is there a crowd gathering? Oh, I can't, I can't. Yes, there is a crowd gathering. We are in Carhenge, Nebraska, which is like Stonehenge, but made of cars. And it sure. was built back in 1987 during an allegedly slightly drunken family reunion. Uh, and it just so happens to be slap bang in the middle of the path of totality. And we have people here from New York, Tennessee, Texas, as far away as Guatemala. People have been camping overnight, and there's a lovely carnival atmosphere. The, there's a, a university set up a little science thing for kids over there. There are people selling bottled water and Danish pastries, and we're getting excited. I can actually, if I put my goggles on, I can actually see there's a little chunk out of the sun already. We're not going to get full totality here for another hour and a bit, and it's going to last for about two and a half minutes here, which is super 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 duper good that's a long chunk of time we'll be able to take these glasses off and just watch it and wonder and splendor and i can't wait guys nick watt live there for us in carhenge nebraska <laughs> thanks to you nick best glasses yet i think we have our own glasses here too by the way yes we have plenty uh, and we might do a little demo later on how to make your own uh uh, what is it? What do you call it? Yeah. <laughs> what is it called even? It's a, it's a, it's a pinhole camera. Yes. So and you're going to do the demo. Yeah. We're to gonna do be this clear, demo. Walt will do the demo. But we have our glasses just to show you guys if you are out there and you're going to try to go watch. It begins, oh my gosh, just a half an hour away now. Don't forget well, you need official glasses. You're definitely going to look that cool or this cool. I can't see anything when I wear them now. I really now, can't. It's incredible. It but, blocks out all. Like, it blocks out all light. You shouldn't be able to see anything out of it. 
The That's how you know they're working. Yep. You want to see the ISO label right on the inside to know that they're on the level. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but you really need some of these. Again, the people have been hammering home the safety because it's real no joke. Yes. Uh, you, you should not stare at the sun for any period of time. Make sure your sunscreen's on. Get <laughs> we shouldn't ready for... have to say that. Please don't stare at <laughs> the sun. Please refrain from doing that. <laughs> okay, so we've been talking about the eclipse over and over again, just so you know what to expect. Walt, what exactly happens? What do we experience down here on Earth during the eclipse? Yeah, so it's a, it's a fantastic effect. <laughs> uh, essentially, for a brief period of time, the moon crosses directly across the path of the sun. Sure. Now what's fascinating is you're not going to see the moon. It's too bright out, so, so we won't actually see it coming in front of it. And, and then what you're going to see is essentially, slowly but surely, if you're in the path of totality, the sun is going to get increasingly covered, right? So first thing that's going to happen to know that you're about to enter totality, which is when the sun is totally covered, uh, by the moon, is that you're going to see what they call the diamond ring. It's going to be a flash of light. It's a steady beam. It looks like a diamond ring, as one would, right? Mm -hmm. Then, as the diamond ring goes away, yeah. you're going to see uh, Bailey's beads. And Bailey's beads are a fascinating scientific effect because the moon has... It's kind of got the snot beaten out of it, right? It, it, it gets hit by meteors all the time and has big it's got gaping a bunch of, like, canyons. canyons and valleys yeah. and stuff, so, right? So those are, are, are essentially letting some light through. And so you're going to see a couple little Bailey's beads, and then when they go away, that's when you get totality. And this kind of, and depending on where you are in the path of totality, you can see anywhere from a few seconds to I believe a, more than two minutes. Two a, minutes a full and 40 totality. seconds, yeah. right? Uh, I yeah. believe, what is it, Carbondale? Carbondale, Illinois, you will get the longest moment of totality. And guys, <laughs> by the way, if you are watching on Facebook, thank you for joining us, you can send us your questions and comments and we'll try to get them answered too. If we don't know the answer, we'll find someone who does. Let's go back out to Brad Melke, who is in St. Joseph, Missouri. Brad, what's going on there now? Hey, you guys, right now I am with one of the biggest names in astronomy here in the country. He works at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Could have gone anywhere. And Derek Pitts, you decided to come to St. Joe, Missouri. Why? I chose St. Joseph, Missouri because this is an ideal place to be for this particular eclipse. This is along a narrow band where we have the longest amount of time in the shadow of the moon, 2 minutes 39 seconds. I could go a few hundred miles down to the east and get to 2 minutes and 40 seconds, but this is a really nice location. The weather uh, prognosis for this location was pretty good, and we have a nice open field, and I have 15,000 of my friends here with me. It was pretty good, and if you guys look around right now, you might be wondering where this eclipse is going to happen because, Derek, it's cloudy. Have people been freaking out today? You know, everybody's concerned about what the weather conditions are, and we keep our fingers crossed that we'll get a break in the clouds at just the right time. So if we can get a break right around 1 o'clock, which is when totality happens here, that'll be a good thing. But even if we don't get that, yeah. we'll still be able to experience some of the eclipse because we will feel the darkness here. We will see the darkness here. We just won't get to see all the other really cool aspects of totality. And there's a difference between these sort of high-hanging clouds, the light clouds, and these low clouds, right? And if I use these glasses, I can probably still... Uh probably still get something there. Yeah, you'll still be able to get something, but it's the low clouds we don't want. Those very high, thin clouds, that's fine. We'll take those if we can't get anything else. But if we can just get rid of the low clouds and the mid-level clouds, that'll increase our chances of being able to see this. You guys know it's a big week when hundreds of people are showing up to a local college to hear an astronomy talk. These were not students of the college. These were just people <laughs> around to hear you speak. And Derek, you were talking about not just the science of the eclipse itself, because we've been talking about that all day. You were talking about how people have viewed eclipses throughout generations and millennia. Tell us about that. Yeah, I chose to talk about that because the mechanics of, the, of eclipses are very well known, and the eclipse itself is nothing more than the mechanical motion of the moon around the Earth. The moon's and just doing its thing. It's just doing its thing. So imagine this planet without people and an eclipse. What would an eclipse be? It would be very little. But with people, that's the added element of drama, of excitement, of anticipation, all those things we feel here today with all the people here. So I chose to talk about how have we as humans reacted to eclipses. There's been fear, there's been interest, there's been scientific study. All of those things have rolled in to make the story of eclipses what they are today, and that's what brings people out like this. There's even been threats. Christopher Columbus said, you better hang out with me, Native Americans, or, or else. Yes, that is true. Eclipses have been used in lots of interesting ways for both good. In 585 B.C., for example, an eclipse was used to stop a war between two countries, and it's been used for bad things as well. 1504, Columbus used an eclipse to threaten indigenous peoples in the Americas about a blood red moon if they didn't provide him with the provisions he needed for his crew to live on the on the islands where they were so they get used for good and bad things but 
Eclipses themselves are not inherently bad. They have no values. They're neither good nor bad. It's us who put the values on them, and that's why I think the human element is so important. All right, you guys, what's happening right now? It's raining a little bit right now, but I don't Just know if that little. matters. No, oh, that doesn't matter because okay. that's going to blow through, and we're going to have clear sky. Okay, well, then last question for you. You're the pro. You're the expert. You've been to a few of these things. What are you looking for today when you look up at the sky? Well, I'm looking for the same things I'm always looking for is what of the effects of the solar eclipse can I see better? Because they vary from eclipse to eclipse. Sometimes the corona will look this way. Other times it'll look that way. Prominences may be bigger. They may be placed in a different position. I may be able to see these elusive uh, features called shadow bands, or I may not. So it really depends on the conditions for that day at for the eclipse, what I'll see. Then I can compare what I've seen from one eclipse to another eclipse. All right, you guys, people have come here from all across the country because generally the weather is so good this time of year. August 21st, for the last five years, it has been sunny every single one of those years. We're trying to see if we can go six for six right now, you guys. So from St. Joseph, I'm Brad Milkey. We'll see you in a bit. All right, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. No, no whammy. clouds, no clouds. Oof. That was Brad Milkey there. And also, we should point out, if you're out watching the eclipse, you kind of want like a jacket or a sweater with you too, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to cover up a little bit. You want to be prepared for everything. The temperature's going to go down when you hit totality. Again, That's crazy. we hear people talking on Facebook right now that they're not seeing huge uh, light changes so far. Once totality happens, that's when things start getting weird and temperatures go down, <laughs> animals start thinking it's nighttime. You're going to see some really interesting effects happen when that happens. So preparation is half the key to enjoying this thing. There you go. Be a good Boy Scout or Girl Scout. Just yeah. be prepared. Let's go back over to Rachel Scott, who's in Columbia, South Carolina. I think she's found some folks to talk to who are out there for the eclipse. Rachel? Hey, on the hay wall. Well, I'm joined by some of the youngest fans that are in here today because today the kids have off, right? So you guys are super excited to see the eclipse. Yeah! Yeah! So do you guys have your glasses? Are you ready? Yeah! Show us your glasses. Go ahead and put them on for us, guys. There it is. Show the camera. They're ready for total solar eclipse. So how old are you? Nine and one month. Nine and one month, mm -hmm. counting wow. down the days. Okay, so what is going to be the best part about today? Either the baseball game or seeing the solar eclipse? Total eclipse. Total eclipse. All right, there you guys have it. So nice meeting you guys. Go ahead and wave to the camera for us. Hi, guys. <laughs> Super excited here. And they're just... There are just some of 9,000 people that are going to be joining us here today. Obviously, I, I'm fully in right now. I have the jersey on. The jersey's going to be glowing in the dark um, when the fireflies play today. And I do want to introduce you guys to some more people that we have here. They have their fans already blowing. And I understand that you also bought, brought spare glasses for people that may not have them. I want to make sure everybody had them. Yeah, we're so you guys are from Columbia, South Carolina. How excited are you that this landed in your city? Tremendous, tremendous, great. All right, we got some donuts and Krispy Kreme too. Now, have any of you ever seen a solar or partial eclipse before? 78, 78, 79. What was that experience like? I was at Walmart or Kmart and it was just dark outside. It was awesome. It was awesome. nothing like this, but all this fun. A once in a lifetime opportunity. Yes, once in a lifetime. All right, thanks guys so much. So the game is going to be getting started just shortly here. These, these guys are going to take their seats soon, but I want to pan out straight to the field right now where the Columbia Fireflies will be facing off against the Rome Braves again today. And again, guys, 9,000 people expected to fill these stands. Tons of people all waiting for that special moment. I do have to say that weather is a really big concern today. While it is very hot and sticky, there's also some clouds. So we're hoping that these clouds are able to disappear by 241 so we get that full two minutes and 30 seconds of totality. We're keeping our fingers crossed here in the stands in Columbia, guys. Fingers crossed from Rachel Scott, who will be glowing in the dark during yes. totality in that <laughs> jersey. Uh, are you ready, Walt? I can't tell if you're ready. I am not. so ready for this. Again. It's fantastic. I can't see any lights in this building or anything at all. <laughs> well, I'm ready for an eclipse. Spirit. He's getting in the spirit. Guys, stay with us here. We're going to keep bouncing around the country. Let's head over to Idaho, hey. Sun Valley. Olivia Smith is back with us now on the top of a mountain talking to some folks who've gathered there for the great American eclipse. Olivia? Hey, I'm the Hey Walt. Yeah, we're here on top of Bald Mountain, more than 9,000 feet in the air. I got my 
eclipse glasses. I'm ready and I'm actually seeing here the eclipse is taking place. It looks almost about one third covered. So that's really cool. I'm wearing my eclipse shirt. Not as cool as Rachel's glow in the dark, but still repping it. And we've talked to people from all over the world that have come here from Paris, from Italy, and I get a lot of local people. The tickets up here are limited tickets. More than 1100 were sold. But again, they didn't want to have it too overflowing up here on top of the mountain where, you know, we're above. We have a really great view. It's a beautiful valley. If you pan over, you could kind of see people are lined up next to the edge of this mountain. They are lined up. They're ready to go. They got their picnic blankets out. They got their food. They are ready to sit here for a few hours and many are already seeing it taking place right now and people have spread out all over this mountain. So we're on one section here, but even behind me, people have gone across. Bald Mountain continues. It's a pretty big mountain and people have hiked over there and they're just keep walking and walking to get the to get the good view. So it's it's an exciting scene. People here really say this is a once in a lifetime experience. A few remember the last eclipse in 79, but most don't. And so they're here, they're they're ready to go. So Idaho is at a perfect location for folks from California and a lot of the Mountain West to check out this location. Where have you met people from? again from Paris from London wow. from Amsterdam so people have come from all over from Italy but a lot of people from Boise people who grew up in Sun Valley actually who have taken their kids here every year and they said that they really wanted to take their kids here for this event for the special day they usually come for July 4th but they said we're gonna scrap July 4th and we're coming for the eclipse with our families so a lot of locals a lot from Seattle and I think the reason that this place is great according to locals it's sunny here three quarters of the year so they have great Great weather, great visibility. We got lucky today. It's nice and warm. It's really the perfect view. Sounds like a block party. <laughs> Just on top of a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> great weather, great view. It is. It's a block party on a mountain. And a great crowd. We're there uh, with Olivia Smith in Sun Valley, Idaho. Thanks, Olivia. This feels like a really good Thanks, time, guys. by the way, you guys, to check out some of our Facebook questions. Yeah. Uh, one of our viewers named Sarah has written in, when was the last time there was a total eclipse in the U.S., including Hawaii and Alaska, of course? So, if you include Hawaii, uh, in 1991, in July 11, 1991, there was an yeah. eclipse that went over Hawaii. Weather wasn't great, though. We had to go down to Baja, mm -hmm. California, and Mexico to actually get a really solid look at that eclipse. Mm -hmm. But if you want to talk about really good, solid, total eclipses in the, in the continent of the United about. States, February 26, 1979. 79. 79. Jimmy Carter was in office. Yep, and, and <laughs> it, we carried that. Again, there's been some solid viral posts going around from ABC's coverage of that event. Yep. And um, again, the next one that we have coming up is over in 2024 in April. Yeah, and I so. think we actually have a map of that too if you guys want to check that out. This is what it's going to look like. If you miss today's, for whatever reason, it's cool. You can watch it here with us. But then make your plans for 2024 to get back out there. That blue line is the path of totality. So it's not a coast to coast eclipse. Nope. Like it's happening today. That you get a last Texas, one, New York one. <laughs> Cover a lot of the country. The last coast to coast one was 99, 99 years, years ago. ago yeah. Right? Ages ago. We haven't had one of these in a very long time. And, and that was actually a very formative event in American science. It was really an opportunity for American astronomers and American scientists to really prove their own uh, on the national stage. Eclipses are a great opportunity to bring parts of the world together. Uh, you see, uh, historically, you've seen after World War I, uh, German scientists and British scientists came together uh, in, a, in a solar eclipse to prove some of the German scientists, Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. It's a huge opportunity for the world to come together. And, uh, and we really hope that bond. happens again today. Yeah. Why not? Why not? It's a party, you guys. It's a good Celestial one. event. When do you get to say that? 70 miles wide is the actual path of totality, mm -hmm. right? 3,000 miles it will traverse, and it moves fast, it right? It moves real quick. So when it comes out over uh, over the beach in, in Oregon, right, yeah. you're looking at something like four times the speed of sound in air, right? You're looking at almost 3,000 miles per hour. Now, it's going to slow down. And by the time that you get to Kentucky, it's at its slowest. Yeah. That's about two times the speed of sound, so like 1,400 miles per hour. And then as it gets towards Charleston and it starts going off the edge of the earth, it's going to start speeding up again. So, again, it, it's variable speed. Again, you're going to see it, I think it's something like 1,700 miles per hour on average across the country. But give or take. Give, give or take. take. <laughs> um, but it is a heck of a ride, you know. And, and uh, in the past, NASA's tried to track with this with planes. I know today they have 
two planes going along with it, but it's, it's a heck of a speedy one. <laughs> so stay right here with us, guys. We're going to have a special network report coming up very shortly. But take a look again at this weather map. We are tracking across all of these locations along the path of totality. And you can see there's going to be some, this looks like a little bit of weather in some of those places. We hope it clears up. Looking a little cloudy over as we saw in South Carolina where we have in Kansas stuff. City. A little bit, a little bit. Clear skies over on the West Coast, though. Yeah, all throughout the Mountain West. And Idaho seems like it's just going to have a beautiful eclipse today. Okay. What are you most excited about, Walt? I'm so excited for other, about, other than being here with me. I want to see how people <laughs> feel during it. I want to hear about how this, like, this country's coming together. Uh, like, 12 million people leave, live within this uh, strip. Millions more are going to join them today. It's going to get cold. It's going to get interesting. The whole wildlife around them is going to react differently. How about you? I think it's just crazy that we know this is coming, that yeah. we can track it to this degree, <laughs> right? And also, it's one of those moments where you see something so, so big, and you realize how very small we are. Absolutely. Right? It's a national event that we can all kind of care about and, and just see. So thanks for being here with us to watch it. We've got a big network special coming up right here. Stay with us to watch The Great American Eclipse right here on ABC. Let the natural wonder begin. You're looking live off the coast of Oregon, where in just moments, we will experience the beginning of this total solar eclipse. You're looking at those pictures right now. That's the sun, the moon already beginning its work as it crosses into the path between the sun, of course, and Earth. It's gonna to continue to do this today, creating a site that has been described by most people who have ever seen it as breathtaking. And so rare, it hasn't been seen across the US, the entire US in 99 years, not since 1918, did a total solar eclipse cross the entire country like it's about to do in just a few minutes here. And the last time a total solar eclipse was seen from anywhere in the U.S. was 38 years ago. The date, February 26th, 1979. This is an ABC News special. Not until August 21st, 2017, will another eclipse be visible from North America. That's 38 years from now. May the shadow of the moon fall in a world at peace. And ABC News, of course, will bring you a complete report on that next eclipse 38 years from now. No, no. Now, in just minutes, it is finally here. For the first time this century, it's lights out, hands up. We're glowing. For the first solar eclipse to hit America in 38 years. And we are right there with your ultimate cosmic block party. Celebrating all across the path of this historic solar eclipse. Live coast to coast. It's the great American eclipse. And the sensational journey starts right now. With David Muir reporting from inside the path of totality in Charleston, South Carolina. 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Hello, everyone from Charleston, South Carolina. Our team is live across the country at this hour. You know, that was World News Tonight anchor Frank Reynolds promising 38 years ago we'd be back to cover this total solar eclipse. And here we are and proud to be here. And there it is again. Let's go live to the sun just over Lincoln City, Oregon at this hour, about to be eclipsed by the moon. And if you look at the lower part of your screen there, you can see the clock. The key here is 116. That's our first max totality that we'll see it'll be coming from oregon so watch the clock we'll be going live to our team there you know this whole path of totality is going to create a shadow 70 miles wide on the ground and as that shadow moves across the country it'll carve a path 3,000 miles long and listen to this it'll take just an hour and 33 minutes for the eclipse to cast that shadow traveling coast to coast that shadow moving at an average speed of 1800 miles per hour that's more than three times faster than a commercial jet the total eclipse will span across 14 states this afternoon, ending its journey just north of where I'm standing right here in South Carolina before heading out to sea. And in just a few moments, the moon is going to pass directly between the sun, the earth, completely blocking all light and creating a black hole where, of course, the sun should be. And as it happens, the temperatures in that shadow could drop an average of 10 to 12 degrees. We're going to see what happens with that today. Millions of Americans, of course, are waiting right now. And the closer you are to that center line right there, right through the middle of that shadow, the longer you'll be in complete darkness known as totality. But it's fleeting, lasting up to two minutes, 40 seconds or so. 12 million Americans live in this path of 100% totality. But look at how far that eclipse spreads to the north and south of that line. Hundreds of millions will see some version of this eclipse today. We are in this together. We know many families have already traveled toward that center line where they will gather in small towns, farms, and national parks, all to watch this extraordinary sight. We have an entire team of ABC News correspondents and cameras coast to coast live as the solar eclipse 
moves across the country. And if you are one of the millions who traveled to see it or will see it right in your backyard, your neighborhood, we want you to be part of this special with us. Share your pictures, your videos with us, and we're going to try to get as many on the air as we can throughout the next couple of hours. Just go to our website, abcnews.com, and you'll see right there how to do it. We can't wait to see what you capture. So why is this happening today, and why is it so rare? Take a look at this. The Earth rotates on its axis, making a full turn every 24 hours. The moon circles the Earth every 31 days, and the Earth and the moon then rotate around the sun every 365 days. Keep in mind, the sun is 400 times larger than the moon, but it's also 400 times further away. And at that distance, it makes the sun and the moon appear to us to be the same size from here on Earth, which is why the moon completely covers the sun when their orbits intersect. A total solar eclipse happens during a new moon, when the moon moves directly between the Earth and the sun. This perfect alignment, which creates a total solar eclipse, occurs about every 18 months. Usually, we don't see it, because 70% of the Earth's surface is water, and it usually happens over our vast oceans or remote areas of other countries. In fact, it's been 99 years since the last solar eclipse was seen across the entire continental United States, and it won't happen again until 2045. We have waited long enough, that's for sure. So get ready, it's coming, and you're about to see it all live right here on ABC again. The time right now, 104 Eastern. The first totality happens at 116, max totality from Oregon. So we'll take you there live. We've got so many questions. First, of course, the weather, the clouds. Where will we see it best? Where will it blow our minds today? Where will the clouds break our hearts? I see a few of the clouds here in Charleston, but I, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed here. Let's bring in meteorologist Ginger Z. She's in Nashville, which, by the way, the entire city. It's the largest American city to fall right in the path of this total eclipse. And Ginger, you've been looking at the weather across that entire path, that ribbon across the country. Oh, that I have, David. Such an important forecast, probably one of the most important of the century, truly. But what I wanted to start you out with, not only is Nashville uh, one of the biggest or the biggest city in the path of totality, I'd venture to say it's the biggest party. Look at this. We've got rooftops full here along Broadway, lower broad as the locals call it. You can see them all the way down the streets, all the way right here. Check out all my friends. This party on the rooftop at the iconic Tootsie's Bar is just beginning. Our partial eclipse only just began. And I got to tell you guys, we have a lot to talk about in the way of weather because it is a huge day. Let's start with what it looks like. In the Pacific Northwest, it is brilliant. They're already seeing a lot of that eclipse. I want to show you some of the cloud cover. Looking good through the Rockies and Idaho there into Wyoming, but then it gets a little mucky. Once we get into Missouri and parts of Nebraska, you can see the storms blowing up. And then as we go back through the Tennessee Valley, we just have those daytime heating clouds. Scattered storms at the coast, where you are in Charleston, David, but I have to say, no matter what the cloud cover, the party, the celebration, the unity of America and this beautiful celebration of science, the science that I have loved my whole life, I can't geek out more than I will today. <laughs> David, let's head back to you. Yeah, really no question. We needed this moment of unity in this country and nature's wonder is giving it to us. I wanna look at this picture that I'm seeing coming in live from Oregon. You can actually see the sun and the moon almost completely covering the sun now. And keep in mind, 116, of course, is that key moment uh, when it'll be in total darkness there. The first hint of darkness falling, of course, in the shores of the Pacific coast. The totality of the eclipse, 116, 1016 Pacific, minutes away. It's gonna last one minute 58 seconds, and then we're on the move from there right across the country. The shores lined with families at this hour. Meteorologist Rob Marciano back in a part of the country he spent years covering. He's in Lincoln City, Oregon. And Rob, you've got the glasses, you know, we all do here. And we just want to make sure that everyone knows that authorities really aren't joking about this one. They say wear eye protection, and they really mean it today. Yeah, and really during the whole thing, David, I have uh, these uh, special glasses, the glasses they've been, they've been giving out really all across the country. Uh, they look cheap, but they are mandatory viewing. They block out 99.9% .9 of the solar rays, but you can see this eclipse in its entirety. So it's, it's nothing short of spectacular. I got I to gotta say, uh, when you see even partial uh, the partial eclipse across this country, you want to take it in. It is the great American eclipse. Hey, uh, Susie, Suzanne, and... Willie, where are you? Hey, there, there's another way to watch this if you don't have these glasses, and that is to make a pinhole projector. I found these guys in the parking lot, and you got, what, a shoebox, and then what else? A uh, shoebox, paper inside, tinfoil, and a pinhole. And it works. And Willie, your mom was a physicist, obviously inspiring you to see this, uh, your first eclipse total? 
Yes. Yeah, so you're pumped. Yes, I'm pumped. And they got the glasses and the box. So just, you know, just varieties of spice of life. Hey, go Ducks. Go Ducks. What do you got? You got a welder's glasses? Yes. All right, so that's 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 serious serious business right there. Can we see how they look on you? Oh, yeah. They're styling. You are styling. Are you excited for the eclipse, sweetheart? Yes. All right. They're going to come fast and furious here. We are just a few minutes away, David, and the clouds that have been fickle here along the Oregon coastline, it's not the ideal spot. That's why we don't have a massive crowd like they do in the deserts, but we have seen enough of that partial eclipse to get fired up, and we are awaiting totality, and we're just seeing enough of a clearing to, I think, see it in just a few minutes, David. It is exciting. Isn't that exciting, guys? Yeah. Woo! 1776 was the last time we had a coast-to-coast -coast eclipse totally, exclusively, to Americans. How much more American can it get? This is the great American eclipse, baby. I hope you all take part of it. David? Thank you, Rob. We're going to come right back to you in just a couple of minutes so you can show us uh, what you're seeing. And I just want to say, you know, we've all got these glasses here. And you can see the setup here and all these bright lights. I put these on and you see nothing. So when Rob says, you know, put the glasses on and test with your the light on your iPhone, uh, that's a really good indicator that, you know, these glasses are probably approved and you're, you're in good shape. So here's the question. What's it going to be like? I thought we'd check in with someone who has experienced it before. Bill Nye, the science guy, you know him. He's the CEO of the Planetary Society, the author of the New York Times bestseller, Everything All at Once. He's at the Homestead National Monument in Beatrice, Nebraska. And Bill, no question in your mind this is going to change people today? I hope so. It's already started here. We can see it if you have the special glasses. Uh, the, uh, this is getting dimmer and dimmer as the moon comes across the disk of the sun. And just notice something that I got to say I didn't expect. Are you guys excited? People, a lot more people than I anticipated are excited and anticipating this event. In other words, you can feel the excitement building, even though we're just a few percent into the, uh, into the uh, occlusion, into the eclipse. It's really uh, so thrilling to see so many people excited about this science. I want to ask you what's actually going to happen when darkness falls, because a lot of people wonder about that temperature drop, anywhere from 10, 12 degrees, uh, animals being confused, wildlife perhaps. And you'll be able to see, you know, a number of planets and stars up there. So a pretty significant change in that that tiny window of darkness that we're going to witness here. Well, it becomes night. So is it cooler at night than it is during the day? The birds and insects act, act as though it's night. And uh, so what happened here in Beatrice, the clouds just cleared and people are all putting on their special glasses and looking skyward because I guess the eclipse is really apparent for this moment. We would t turn the camera up toward it, but oh yes, the moon is coming across from uh, on a clock face would be about 1.30, 2 o'clock, moving from upper right to lower left uh, as we perceive it here in Beatrice, Nebraska. And it's just an exciting thing, everybody. Just think about the diligence of astronomers who are able to predict this eclipse within less than a second. And here we all gathered, here we are gathered to celebrate our understanding of what I like to call our place in space, our place in the cosmos. It's just a, a, yeah, an exciting thing that the clouds cleared at this moment. You're absolutely right. A reminder of where our place is in the cosmos today. Bill Nye, stick around with us here. We're going to be talking to you as the afternoon progresses here. We want to go to Carbondale, Illinois, dubbed the capital of the eclipse because it's right in the area. This is really incredible where totality is going to last the longest and where it will return in a few years from now. We'll talk about that in a bit. Dr. Lucianne Walkowicz, an astronomer at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago and the incoming chair of astrology uh, at the Library of Congress. Dr. Walkowicz, first of all, I love this because you study this, you know more about this than any of us out here, but it's still your first eclipse. It's my first eclipse. I've seen a couple partials, but I couldn't be more thrilled to be here today in the path of totality in Carbondale, what they're calling the crossroads of the great American eclipse. This is really a special thrill for me, especially after years and years of studying the kinds of things that we'll be able to see with our naked eye when the sun is in totality. Dr. Walkowicz, we're going to be checking back in with you as the afternoon progresses. She mentioned Carbondale, by the way. It's going to be the longest max totality. That's about 2 minutes 40 seconds. Some have said 2 minutes 41. 
but that shows you how quickly this is going to move. One of the best places to experience the eclipse just maybe Madras, Oregon, build itself as a solar town, hoping for the best eclipse watching weather in the country. They are pulling out all the stops for an expected crowd of 20,000. ABC's Matt Gutman is joining the party there, as he always does. Matt, the crowd is really enormous. Hey. I've seen the traffic jams for people all weekend long trying to get there. 20,000, David, just here in what's called Solar Fest, but uh, a spectra spectator I spoke to had a different name for it. He said this is basically Woodstock for nerds. Now, you can see there are thousands of people arrayed here. There are tent cities in the background over there to the right. 5,000 tents over there, four people to attend over there. There are campers. There are 100,000 people who have inundated this area. By the way, Madras population, just under 6,000. So an amazing spectacle here right on this cow farm that has been converted into the world's prime viewing site. NASA is based here as well because this place should offer the most unobscured site right into that eclipse. It's almost so near that I can look into the sun. But one hitch is that there have been wildfires in the area and I think you may be able to see Mount Jefferson off in the distance. The top of it is obscured by that blanket of haze and smoke but still where I'm looking almost directly at the sun it is pretty close. Everybody here's got their glasses. These folks drove nine hours with a family of seven in a van. You guys ready? They have their glasses on. And people celebrating all sorts of things. There's a guy who's going to pop up the question to his what to his girlfriend. Shh, don't tell. There are people celebrating birthdays. Folks over there drove over from Boston, but you can sense the enthusiasm in the crowd. It's getting near and near. It's almost there, and you can already feel the temperature drop, David. Pretty amazing. Well, I hope she says yes, and I'm glad she's there and not at home watching. Otherwise, you'd know it's coming. Anyway, let us know what she says there. And, Matt, we love seeing that, sh that sun shining brightly on your face. That means they're going to have a spectacular sight right there. They already have a spectacular site in Oregon. So let's get back to meteorologist Rob Marciano. Again, Lincoln City, Oregon. Total solar eclipse will be the first visible in the United States. 116, about a minute, less than a minute away now, Rob. Tell us what you're seeing. And it's getting dark, David. It is so spooky right now, right? The temperature is dropping. The excitement is growing here. I hope that we're going back and forth to the special camera that has this, this eclipse. And I've got to put my glasses on to witness this. Uh, we've just gone... We've just gone completely dark, at least the way we see it here. Oh, no, still a sliver left. Is that the diamond ring? Would that be the diamond ring, perhaps? Just a sliver left. A little more. There it is. <laughs> we have reached totality here on the Oregon coastline. Total eclipse of the sun. Just an incredible sight, Rob. We're looking at the corona of the sun, the atmosphere of the sun. It is incredibly dark. Uh, it, uh, I, it looks like night has fallen. The clouds certainly exacerbating that, but this is beyond twilight. Uh, it's a spooky, spooky experience. Uh, wh what do you have to say? What does it feel like? We came from Los Angeles just to see this with my nephews. We, we, we drove all, all the way from Los Angeles. What drove here from Los Angeles? Yeah. That is commitment, baby. Welcome to the Oregon coastline. How's it feeling right now seeing your first eclipse? It's amazing. I love it. Wow. And we need the lights to see all this. We need the lights. i got to check it out one more time, David. Oh, my. It is just absolutely spectacular. Look how dark it is, how quiet it is. The air is still. This is like being in the eye of a hurricane. It is spooky. It is spiritual. i got to tell you, Rob, America is watching is this surreal. with you. It's amazing. And when you, when you see the corona around the sun there, Rob, the atmosphere of the sun, oh. Talk us through the science of that. I mean, that's that's hotter than the sun itself. It's millions and millions of degrees Fahrenheit. It's, uh, you know, you're talking about yeah, thousands of degrees Fahrenheit, but the, what we're seeing right now is the corona, the, out, the outer atmosphere of the sun, which we don't get to see any other time. This is why scientists are launching balloons. This is why they get their telescopes out. This is why they're so jazzed about this, because we're able to see things that we don't normally see, with the exception of the eclipse. Yeah, you, exactly. She said there's something coming out from it. It's almost like you can see some solar flares uh, uh, coming out. Uh, Bailey's beads is something we saw earlier. You know, the moon is not is not completely smooth. So we're seeing some of the outer edges of the sun come through those valleys and over those mountains. And, and we're, that's why you see that kind of this, this star effect now. And different colors are happening right now. It's right now. unbelievable. Oh, the diamond ring. 
We're starting to see it. It's starting to. It's, it started, it's, we're starting to get out of totality now, David. That was our two minutes of ecstasy, quite honestly. Unbelievable. Yeah, this is Total extraordinary. To, to let people know at home how York. we're pulling this off with our photographers. Yeah, Rob, I just want to let folks at home know how we're pulling off the technology of this. You know, the photographers operating these cameras have to slide in a lens, if you will, into the camera to shoot up. Uh, at the beginning of it and at the end, but during totality, they can actually pull that out. So that's why you're seeing some of the shifting shades there uh, on your screen. But Rob, now we're now seeing on the other side here what happens. It's almost the exact reverse. And you talked about those Bailey's beads shining down, coming through the valleys. That's named after Francis Bailey, who first figured out what that was. Exactly. I mean, you know, so much of science, the, the, the terms and names that we that we rattle off are, are pioneers that discovered them or or uh, were in some process out there uh, making things happen. Now the sun's coming out. It's getting brighter. It's getting a little bit uh, warmer. Uh, it's it's hard to describe what what it's like, uh, David. The rest of America is going to experience right. it now fast and furiously. Back to you. In fact, they're going to. In fact, they are right now. Let's go to Madras, Oregon, where Matt Gutman is standing by. Remember, Matt was just under blazing sun a moment ago. Matt, talk us through it. I, it's hard to. I'm almost speechless. The crowd here is absolutely ecstatic. I'm going to have our cameraman, Glenn, turn down the lights. You actually get a sense of how... Turn it off, Glenn. Let's see how dark it really is. It's pitch black here. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Right now, we're looking at the corona that's a million degrees so much hotter than the surface of the sun just a few about six thousand degrees you can see it right there you guys i'm gonna come back to our folks here i mean you guys drove nine hours you know this is the second most beautiful thing i've seen in my life is that the first well, I was thinking this one here, you know, but... <laughs> That's a smart husband right there. Did you notice that? That is wisdom at work. I want to bring you over here to a friend of mine I met. Aria goes to... This is spectacular. Aria studies astrophysics at Pomona College. Aria! She drove here from Boston, David. Drove a car from Boston. That's 3,000 miles. Is it Aria. No, it's bad. absolutely <laughs> amazing. It's so dark out of here. It looks like a sunset over there. It's amazing. And, and you can notice that the temperature has gone down substantially. There's so much less radiation here bouncing up and heating us up that it's actually chilly. Folks are in their sweatshirts, David. We got sweaters because we knew it was going to drop something crazy over here. And so now we're warm and fine, right, Carmen? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> right, Carmen. Wow, this is a spectacular sight, David. This is something that so many people didn't expect to see. There are lights in the distance. There have been jets flying right by the corona. There are airplanes in the sky. That must be an incredible sight just beyond the teepees you can see them and this is lasting for two minutes and four seconds because we are right in the crosshairs of that totality it is happening right here and you can hear the cheers from the crowd as people watch that corona just radiate out now it might have been clearer had we not had those forest fires nearby but still that is a pretty exceptional sight that so many people here didn't expect to see we have folks with their telescopes out here i'm going to try not to interrupt them is it, he doesn't want to be interrupted. What do you guys think? This is pretty cool. It looks like it's nighttime. It's like a sunset, like all around. It's pretty cool. Right and and what's ex as what's astounding is that it continues. Now we're getting the diamond ring effect. Right now, the sun is slowly being taken out of the shadow as the light increases markedly. You can see it's just it's like someone shining a spotlight on this field. There are thousands of people here. David, 100,000 people just in this part of Oregon outside of Madras, feasting their eyes on a spectacle that many of us will never get to see again. Back to you, David. This is a, a pretty remarkable sight Just here. incredible. 1022 Pacific time there. You're looking live at Madras, Oregon. That's Matt Gutman and the team. And let's go back to that shot if we could. We literally saw it go dark there for about two minutes time. That was their max totality. Now the sun has come back out. We are less than 10 minutes away from our next moment of max totality in this country. So we're going to take a break. The great American eclipse. Our coverage continues live right here on ABC right after the break. We'll be back. This is not hey guys, you are watching this continuing coverage of the Great American Eclipse right here with ABC. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Amna Navaz here with Walt Hickey. Isn't that something? That was dope. That's incredible. 
See, even it's if so you cool. couldn't make it out to the Path of Totality, you can experience it several times over all the way across the country <laughs> coast to right coast. here with us. So folks in <laughs> Oregon have already experienced it, right? Uh, yep. Idaho is up next. Idaho is up next. How about we take some questions from our Facebook audience? What Absolutely. Do you think? Yeah. First one up. Uh, let's see. Someone is asking, can I watch it without the magic box when it's completely dark for a few seconds? What yes. Do you say, well, then you're, if you were in the path of totality yes. and you were going to get a total solar eclipse, yeah. uh, just like Dr. Lucianne Walkowitz said uh, uh, out, out in Illinois, rather, mm -hmm. um, you're good. You can take them off. Uh, you, you can absolutely look at it then because the, the moon is blocking out the sun. It's the, it's the diamond ring that you got to be worried about. It's those right. uh, Bailey's beads. You shouldn't look at the sun in that. You should keep the goggles on for that, right? or you should keep looking in the magic box for that. Yep. But once you're in totality, you're good to go. Pop Take them, them off. off. Yep. And then the minute that you start seeing that sun come back around again, you got to pop them back. Pop them back on. Yeah. Hey, Walt, what causes a solar eclipse? Interesting question. <laughs> the sun goes about its business. The moon goes about its business. But they kind of bump into it. Like, <laughs> essentially, uh, the, the moon goes across the path of the sun right. uh, as we would see it in daytime. And, and that has a couple different effects. Since the Earth is turning at the same time, this thing moves very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and essentially, the, for a brief moment, the moon is obscuring the direct path of the sun. That's for it. a total eclipse, yeah. it's directly in path of it. It's covering it entirely for anywhere from zero, a couple seconds to two minutes 40 in this particular eclipse. Oh, I think one question a lot of people have is why don't we have one more often, right? Because basically they're always going we have across them all the time. We have them about, I think it's like, what, two every three years? Yep. The issue is Earth's a lot of ocean, right? About 70% <laughs> of the Earth is ocean, so if you're going to have an eclipse, a lot of times it's going to be over the ocean. So Only it's counts. very rare that you have one like this. Only counts if we can see it, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, someone from Philly, I think, is asking, what will Philly see? What about Philly, Walt? I hope they're from Philly and not just concerned for Philly. <laughs> Philly's going to get a partial eclipse. <laughs> Uh, so, it's like, so Maine, Bangor, Maine, right? Tippy top of the country. They're still going to get about 50% of the sun covered, right? right? Philly's going to see it. They're going to need the goggles the whole time, though. Don't, don't mess with this, Philly. All right? I know, I know you, Philly. Don't I mess with this. I know how you do, Philly. I know do how you not. do this, Philly. Do not, Philadelphia. <laughs> do not stare at the sun. But this is the great thing about this eclipse. <laughs> this is why it's called the Great American Eclipse. It's because literally everyone, everyone in America it. will be able to experience everyone. some part of it. Real quick, will it harm your camera phone if you film it? Wrong question. Don't film it with your camera. <laughs> we have lots of people out there. You saw that telescope, right? That fella out, out in, in Madras, right? Mm -hmm. He's, he's going to get a way better picture than you ever will. You Focus on your experience with this eclipse. You know what? You just stay here with us because we have special cameras. We will be shooting every moment of every totality moment. as it happens. And you can catch it all right here live, you guys. So why go anywhere else? Yeah, leave it to the pros. Don't mess with your phone. I mean, it could potentially harm the cameras. I understand it sometimes. But don't mess with that. Leave it to the pros. Enjoy it. Bond with the rest of America. Leave it to us here, guys. We're going to take you back to the network special. Stay with us here for continuing coverage of the great American eclipse. Coverage of the Great American Eclipse. We're glowing in the dark. Here again, David Muir. And you're looking right now at pictures just moments ago in Madras, Oregon. Just an incredible sight as that uh, total solar eclipse swept in over the Pacific Northwest. And think about this. When the moon shadow began traveling, when it arrived in Oregon, it was traveling at 3,400 3, miles per hour. And as it left Oregon, it was traveling at 2,900 miles per hour. It shows you that the distance between the Earth and the moon, the moon's a little further away. And that's why those speeds are going to change as they come across the country. I want to bring in Bill Nye as we look at those pictures from Oregon. That was just stunning, uh, Bill. Just explain to us why those speeds change and why th these moments are really so fleeting. I mean, this is traveling very quickly. Say it again. Something about why Explain these to us moments why are the spectacular. Speed of this makes these uh, moments so fleeting. Yeah, they're so fleeting. The moon oh, the mo why they're so fleeting? Well, you were just talking about the speed of the moon relative to the Earth's surface. And keep in mind, uh, every time you have a birthday, you've gone around the sun about a mi billion more kilometers, a billion more kilometers. So in order to do that, you're going extraordinarily fast. So is the moon. So although the sun may be, in a sense, uh, hardly moving relative to us in space, relative to the background stars, we are going like crazy around the sun, and the moon's going like crazy around us. So these things only last for a little while. You can see it's raining here in Beatrice, Nebraska. But if you really press the glasses to your forehead, you can just get a glimpse of it. Uh, and so we see a clear patch right. of clouds coming, and we're all excited about that. The wind is blowing it we this way. We are excited, Bill. We're watching right way. along with you. 
but it's raining Everyone and Beatrice people there over here, right? Oh, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're celebrating in the, meantime, look the at eclipse. This. We're looking. We're looking live there in the lower corner, Sun Valley. You, you got one minute, 23 seconds now to the next totality. As you can see there, just a sliver of the sun remains. Uh, you can see they're, they're actually changing the lens on the camera. That's what they have to do before they can actually show you the total eclipse. Let's go to Olivia Smith in Sun Valley, Idaho. I mentioned how quickly this is moving. We're now in Idaho and Olivia, what are you seeing? Hey, David, yeah, we're here. It's getting cold up here. Everyone, are you excited? Yeah. David, you're seeing barely a sliver of the sun, just barely a sliver up there. And the sun was hot earlier here. It was fighting the eclipse. And now it feels like nighttime, looking out over this beautiful valley that we've been seeing all day, once cased in sun. Now just a little sliver as the moon is taking over the sun. More than 1,100 people bought tickets to be up here for this event, so limited tickets. Many people taking the chairlift to get to the top of Bald Mountain. And what a key moment this is, as you know, Rob was talking about earlier. This is the moment as the sun begins to completely disappear when people will be looking for you know, those so-called Bailey's beads, bits of lights poking through the canyons and craters on the roughed up surface of the moon. That's actually what you see, the, the, the glimmering lights. And they talk about the diamond ring at the very last moment, that, that blast of light. And just listen to the crowd now waiting for this in Idaho. These people came all the way down from Jamaica. They traveled more than a day, and you're seeing it right now. Yep. Janice yeah. and your friends, what's it like? It's, it's awesome! awesome. Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm here yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah. It's the but, first we're actually seeing a solar eclipse. We're always seeing a nuclear eclipse, but it's the first we're seeing a solar Luna, Luna. 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 <laughs> And really looking up, it's beautiful. We're seeing the full moon covering the sun. And it, you're right, David, it has that diamond effect around it. And Angie and your family, you've taken your kids here. You're from Idaho. You grew up in Sun Valley. You came down from Boise. What's it like? It's just amazing. We wanted to create something really special, and this is, like, incredible. It's so great. What do you think, Haven? It's so great. I've never seen anything like it. Okay. It's right, so coming back. Cool. Again, David, people really, ex people really excited. Back to you, David. All right, thanks so much, Olivia. This is a stunning sight. Just the beauty of the colors. You know, we, we normally only obviously experience this, you know, at sunset, at twilight. And now so many parts of this country are going to see it turn into night and then and then day again within a, within a matter of just a couple of minutes time next up idaho falls you can see the lower corner of your screen a minute 53 seconds to the next totality and eva pilgrim is standing by this is the official nasa observation site right eva that's right, David. And they have a lot of scientists here that are actually working because this is a rare opportunity them to actually do experiments and to see the corona, that area around the sun that's so bright and so much hotter than the sun. They don't know why it's hotter than the sun. And they're trying to figure it out. This gives them an opportunity to actually look at it because the sunlight isn't blinding them. And we are watching this as it goes now. It's getting skinnier and skinnier and darker and cooler. Um, we're, people, There's a lot of people here from all over the place. I'm going to pull my glasses up so I can talk to one lady here. This is Faye, and Faye, it's your 75th birthday. It is indeed, and I'm here in Idaho Falls for this wonderful eclipse. And you came all the way from L.A. We did indeed. Why come here for the eclipse? Because it was a totality place and NASA approved. And it looks like we are getting right up on it. Let's look up there. It's getting smaller and smaller. We have seen a major temperature drop. I actually had short sleeves on earlier. I put this sweater on because it's cold. <laughs> and, and you don't want to be cold out here in the middle of it. These scientists are actually rolling on this video. So they're going to have uh, a, quite a bit of video watching to see. We're waiting to see if that diamond ring comes out and then they actually told us after the diamond ring to look at the ground because you can see shadow bands it's coming around wow it's really quite incredible as the littlest tiniest bit of the sun goes away and we are almost literally in totality now there it is and at this point we can actually look at it wow you can 
see the light around the sun coming around the moon there. It is an incredible image to see and the excitement from people here. Everyone on their phones trying to catch a glimpse of the totality. This is the one time that it's actually safe to look at it. And as you look on the ground, they were telling us to look for those shadow bands and you can see some of those shadow bands on the ground now. Just an incredible sight, completely dark in the middle of the day. Not like anything that you could ever imagine seeing, David. One you of know, the other Eva, interesting things what, that they're doing, what they're I have right here is that this. Yeah, go ahead. One of the other interesting things they're doing are launching balloons with bacteria in them because the stratosphere above the Earth at this time is like Mars. It's similar to Mars, so they're trying to see if they can have life on Mars and if that bacteria will survive. So it's, they're running all these experiments and they're watching it out of this location. Some really interesting things. Yeah, a little cosmic geography because of what it's not only uh, doing to the sun, but what it's doing to the Earth's atmosphere, as Eva points out. And just to keep in mind here, what Eva's experiencing, this max totality, is a minute 48 seconds there. It shows you that in all these different spots, it depends on where you are in that 70 mile while uh, ribbon. Uh, that's what determines how long your totality lasts. I want to take you to the next picture because this is extraordinary. You know, Never eclipse the bride, they say, but let's go to the next location where there's one bride who was determined. Look at this. She was determined to all of you who love them to deliver her vows and family, in the middle all of, you have of the great American solar hold eclipse. Samantha and Cameron, let's listen the in. Vows which they will make today, and with love and patience, help guide them through this new chapter of their lives together. Now, Samantha's aunt Judy Larson will read a passage from Alexander Dumas. The Count of Monte Cristo, while Sam and Cameron get a head start on the reception. This is taking place in St. Joseph, oh. Missouri. By some estimates, 500,000 people have come to Joseph, Missouri. That would be more than six times the population. They're not all there for the wedding, obviously. But this bride was determined to get married on this day at this moment. And Sarah Haynes, you love a good wedding. And somehow you scored an invite to this. I love a good wedding. I've just met this couple who has impressed me already with their love of science, but we're all crying now. We've been we're, she's so excited today for just the solar eclipse, but if you look at everything from her head to her toe, she is all eclipse right now. Um, right now, they, they just got to the front. They walked out to a Beauty and the Beast theme because I guess she's one of three girls and each of the sisters are a Disney princess. <laughs> so she is Belle and she got to walk out to the Beauty and the Beast song. So she said she was just as excited for this moment as she was for the actual eclipse. And if we get a little cloud, she doesn't even mind because weather is science too. She just said if it's going to be stormy, she wants a big storm. <laughs> I love it. And so going 628 back to, to the next totality in Casper, Wyoming. Sarah, thanks so much. We're going to come back to you shortly. And she'd always wanted to be an astronomist, that bride. A couple of injuries got in the way. So now she's going to get married during the Great American Eclipse. When we come back, our coverage continues of this moment. This moment of unity across this country. We've said goodbye to Oregon and Idaho now. We'll head out to Casper, Wyoming, then on to Nebraska, followed by the rest of the country. We're coming back in a moment. And you're watching ABC's coverage of the Great American Eclipse 2017. Hey guys, I'm Amna Navaz here with Walt Hickey. Stay with us here. Two states down. Yeah. How many more to go? Oh, plenty. I think plenty. Dozen. We got a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us here, though. You're going to keep experiencing that moment of totality over and over and over again. What struck you so far, Walt? Oh, that wedding's lovely. Isn't that what nice? What a perfect time, like a cosmic time to do that. It's just, it's the people, right? It's just everybody coming out to this one beautiful event. And we hope millions more of you coming out to watch as well. 12 million Americans live in the path of totality, many millions more traveling in to watch it. And we hope a lot of you out there watching it with us as well. What do you say we head out to uh, Sun Valley, Idaho? Olivia Smith yeah. has been out there and they just experienced totality. It was pitch black there a moment ago. And now look at that, the sun is shining, Olivia. Hey, I'm the hey wall. It was indescribable to see the total eclipse. Really, the moon dark, that ha that halo of diamond light surrounding it, beautiful. And I'm going to talk here to William and his two daughters. They came up from Boise. And what was it like seeing the eclipse? 
It was oh. amazing. It was amazing? It was amazing? What did it look like? It's kind of like a diamond ring, except without the diamond. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the eclipse? It kind of looks like a ring with um, beads on it with a diamond. It was pretty amazing. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, so they say, William, what do you think? Well, you know, that's why we came. You know, I felt connected. And I know your wife grew up here, and you guys traveled. You live in Boise now, but you traveled back to Sun Valley. Yeah. And you've taken your kids every summer since they were a few months old. Yeah, that's so right. It's a special place for you. It really is. We wouldn't be any other place on a time like this. Yeah, great, thank you guys. So the scene up here has really Omni and Mall. It's been so much fun. They did sell limited tickets to get up here, more than 1,100, and people are taking the chairlifts to the top. And like I said earlier, Sun Valley's known for those chairlifts because they were invented here, so that's pretty cool. All right, a little bit of history there from yeah. Sun Valley, Idaho. Olivia Smith, thanks for being there. And we thank all of you guys out there for watching us on Facebook as well. I think we have a couple of questions we could go to now. Uh, oh, pictures. pictures. Oh, pictures coming in from Facebook. Oh, wow. I apologize. This is, so this is someone watching yes. with one of these homemade cameras, it's a pin, right? pinhole camera. Again, it's one of the oldest technologies that we have when it comes to photography. It's a great way to, it, it's a camera obscura. It's a way of making sure that you don't have to look directly at the sun. Which That's is never a good idea. The biggest no-no of the eclipse. First rule of eclipse, <laughs> sunscreen. Second rule of eclipse, don't look directly at that sun, people. And what about this guy? Oh. Yeah, that's a that's a cute dog. So this is the other thing people ask is, will my pets freak out during yeah. the eclipse? I don't have a good answer for that. Listen, animals know what's up. Uh, <laughs> they, they respond very well to what goes on in their environment. They respond well to what night changes. Uh, a lot of times you'll see plants and flowers react differently to yep. some of these things, again, depending on the extent of this. It's, it's a major natural event, so your pet may know about what's coming up. Pets know what's up. Words of wisdom <laughs> from Walt Hickey. Guys, stay with us here. We've got a dozen more states to go. You're watching The Great American Eclipse right here on ABC. Stay with us. Back now with ABC News Live coverage of the Great American Eclipse. And I know these faces right here. That's ABC News President James Goldson, his wife Laura, and the, the three boys out there. If ever there was a day to take off, the boss knew the day. We're having just as much fun as he is, by the way. We're going to check in with Casper, Wyoming in just a moment. That's where the Goldstons are. But look up above me right here. We're in, uh, obviously, South Carolina, the very last state. I put these on. I can't see a thing. And not the camera or the lights or anything. But when I look up, I can actually see the sun beginning to be carved out by the moon. It's really kind of extraordinary. And I wanted to look at it now because we're, we're fighting with some clouds, but we were able to actually see it. And this is what people are seeing across the country. You can actually see as it begins to happen. Um, but we want to get back to the part of the country that's really seeing the moment. Everything from churches, fairgrounds, packed with viewing parties. We're going to go to Adrian Banker. She's in Casper, Wyoming. And Adrian, you know, the incredible thing about Wyoming is all across that vast state, you know, in Glendo, Wyoming, a 200-person town has been <laughs> turned into a town of thousands. There's like 20,000 people on just one of the airstrips there. You know what, David? It's amazing. The population here in Casper of 59,000. They anticipate 50,000 additional people. People from all walks of life. We've got people from, let's see, Michigan, Denver. I'm going to try to keep my glasses on here, but uh, people from just down the street and as far as New Jersey, they're enjoying the excitement. If you actually look up there, you can see people with their telescopes getting that high perspective. But the sky has darkened. The temperatures dropped about six degrees. And we know that people have come from far and wide from across six continents. This area right here is called David Street Station. It's actually brand new. They built it so that people here could enjoy the eclipse. It wasn't here days ago. So a lot of people excited, and the sky's getting darker and darker. And I got to tell you, you can feel the energy. It's palpable. David. So we can loud. feel it. We can see it right along with you, Adrian. Totality's at 143, so we've got 30 seconds left before we see it go pitch black there in Casper. I'm joined by a former it's astronaut, happening. Mike Massimino, who was with me earlier here uh, this morning. It is happening. I, you're absolutely right, Adrian. You can hear the crowd going wild. It's Mike, happening. this is just an extraordinary thing well, Mike, to witness here on Earth. Yeah. We are all geeked out about it. Everybody's energized. This is what they came for. It's like dust. It's like twilight. Just an extraordinary 
moment to share with you, Adrian, all, all of those people there in Wyoming. And Wyoming is such a stunning state to begin with. As we watch this happen in Casper, you know, they're going to, it's two minutes now to the end of totality there. Look at that. What a stunning sight. And again, what I was saying earlier is our photographers are actually changing the lenses out so that they're able to show you that. Uh, it is really for their own safety because they're the ones looking through the viewfinder on their cameras to look up and capture that moment for you. But Wyoming, just think about the vastness of that state. You've got Yellowstone National Park, which is north of the path of totality. So you're not really seeing anything there, but the Grand Teton National Park, anyone who's there, depending on where you are in that park, you're seeing this uh, as well. But what just a stunning sight. And listen to the crowd. If we could just take a moment, I want to I want to bring that sound up just to listen to the folks taking this in. It's amazing, David. It really is like the glow from that corona is beautiful. And you can take your glasses off during the totality moment, but people are taking their shots. These kids are seeing this, grown-ups for the very first time. They've never seen a total eclipse in their lifetime. It's been 99 years since it's happened here in Wyoming, and it will be decades before it happens here again. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Amazing. You made the point. Oh, look at that shot. That is just an extraordinary shot we just saw. Obviously, that's the corona around the sun, which is the atmosphere around the sun, which we normally don't see to the naked eye. It's only in this moment when, when essentially we, we, we have a coin on top of a coin right now. You know, the moon is not nearly as large as the sun, but because of its distance from Earth, it appears to be. And that's how this magical moment at the new moon uh, actually happens. That is a beautiful uh, picture. Someone who knows this picture far better than I do is Mike Massimino, he's a former astronaut. And Mike, you and I were talking this morning. You've been to space, obviously, a couple of times, a couple of shuttle missions, but there is nothing like all of these American families who are able to take this in themselves. They're, they're all astronauts for a day. Yeah, you know, David, um, the, the one sad thing about the space to see these wonderful things take place out in our universe and on our planet is that uh, you have some friends with you on your crew, but well, a lot of your friends are left in, on, behind on Earth, and your family's back on Earth, and you don't get to share it with them. But this is a great way for, for us all to share it together. Hey, Mike, while I have you, you know, we just saw it, I think, the clearest we've seen it yet so far as we've been on the air today, and that is the diamond ring. It's that moment right before it's done and right afterwards. Right there, you're seeing it, that, that flash of light. It's just so extraordinary. Explain to folks why that's happening. We understand Bailey's beads. It's the light coming through the many valleys and craters of the moon. But what happens in that final second where we see that blast of light, the diamond ring? Yeah, what, you, what you're seeing is just that, that final uh, blast of, of what's coming through the craters getting extinguished uh, before you get into, total, into totality. Just that last bit that's squeaking through there around the moon finally comes out. Um, and all those things, the valley speeds, as you mentioned, and that final diamond blast, those are all things that the scientists are using. We're, we're enjoying them from, you know, aesthetically how beautiful it is, how amazing it is to be a part of this. But the scientists are looking in to understand more about solar flares, solar weather, and how, how the sun works, how the atmosphere works. So this is a great event just for, for everyone to enjoy, but also for the scientists to get the information that they, they both dreamed about getting through this eclipse. All right, Mike Massimino, former astronaut with us. Mike, thanks so much. And as I tweeted earlier, the closest I'll ever be to being an astronaut is being with you, Mike. So we really do appreciate your insight. We love having you on with us. In the meantime, you're not to go from, you know, astronomy and science to pop culture, but right now the number one song on iTunes is Total Eclipse of the Heart. And I would gather that song should be on the playlist at, at the wedding that Sarah Haynes is at. Sarah's talking to the bride right now. So I want to tell Sarah that we're listening. I don't want them to get caught on national TV not knowing. Hey, Sarah, can you hear us? Hey, Beauty and the Beast song. Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, D David is here now, so we want to hear a little more from you guys. Yes. What are you feeling? Excited. Stoked. Yeah. Unbelievably stoked. Like, it's fantastic. It goes by so quick, but, I mean, even with the rain, I couldn't be happier right now. Well, I was telling everyone earlier how you appreciated the science of even the weather, but yes. you said if the weather's not going to be good, it better go big. And I heard, big. I heard a little big. thunder. I did. I love thunderstorms. Here it comes. So and you know what? It's going to get dark anyway, and we're going to feel the eclipse even if we can't see it. I, I, I'm happy. And isn't the most important thing, by the way, before you came out, we did see parts of the eclipse. The, we were able to step out. So you're, all your guests, yeah, the way you intended, we could see the moon cutting in. It looked, The sun looked a little like Pac-Man. Oh, yeah. So we saw it. Excellent. 
And the big important thing is as you guys do this, that it's happening. Yes. Yeah, 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 definitely. Once, well, and this is the whole thing here, the rain obviously we didn't anticipate, but thunder for it to storm a little bit. That's my second choice. Right. <laughs> okay, and this weather was worse on my wedding and someone told me it's love colliding in the skies. Let's go with that. Let's go with it. I love that. I heard that's good luck, right? Yeah. Okay, well the party continues here, but we're gonna send it back to you, David. I love that, Sarah. Wish them well for us. And listen, they know in their one location right there in Joseph, Missouri, that the earth, the moon, the sun, and two hearts align today. So they ought to be proud of that. She worked really hard that ride to make that happen. Next, our cross-country chase takes us to Alliance, Nebraska. And you know Carhenge, you've heard of this, America's answer to Stonehenge, about as close as you can get to the original thing, put together by a family. It all started with a family reunion back in the late 80s. But they're about to see this totality, max totality, in 24 seconds. Let's get right to ABC's Nick Watt. Nick, what are you seeing or not seeing? David, it is about to happen for over an hour. It's been getting darker and darker and darker. It is about to happen here at Carhenge. By the way, that family reunion where they built this thing, I've spoken to the family. They've admitted they were a little bit drunk when they did it. And here we have it. It's happened. It's happened. And there have been clouds streaming across the sky all morning. Luckily, they are not here right now. We've got so many people have traveled here from far. You know, this place is more than 200 miles from the nearest airport. Not a hotel room to be found. We camped in an RV uh, with a thousand or so other people. And it has just happened here. There is not a cloud over, oh my goodness, look at that. I may be speechless. Just an extraordinary sight, Holy Nick, we're moly. watching right along with you. And, and that is, that's what they call car hinge, as I was mentioning. And, and, and Nick, you mentioned that they said they might have been a little inebriated when they put that together back in 87. But I love it, 38 cars rescued from nearby farms, from, from the dumps, they painted them all gray. But right now, you can't see the color. You can just see the outline of them under that extraordinary moment there. And, you know, they built Carhenge. They had no idea it was going to be slap bang in the middle of total eclipse. And by the way, all of those cars, David, they're all American cars. Perfect for our great American eclipse. And I love I, that. I've never seen anything like this. Hey, listen, I, you I know, heard there I mean, wasn't. You can. I, I heard there was I heard there wasn't a hotel room for over 150 miles where you are, Nick. You staying in one of those cars? Listen, David, the nearest RV we could find was in Oklahoma City. So we had to drive that up from there. There, there is not a hotel room to be found anywhere. Not a hotel room anywhere. And, you know, a real cross-section of people here. A lot of people from the local area. A lot of people setting up crystals in the middle of Carhenge. Um, a lot of the kind of hippie types, the new age types. We've got the bikers doing the security here. Just a really delicious, lovely atmosphere. People just getting into it. People having a great time seeing something that most of us have never seen before and most of us will never see again. And the weather played its part. No clouds. So happy. So happy I could cry. Okay, and it's going to well, last you should, here for Nick. two and a Nobody half minutes, you. which is so one of the longer there, places. <laughs> you can get away with crying. Nobody will see it. It's almost pitch black. Nine <laughs> seconds to the end of totality there for you. Carhenge, he's right in the middle of those endless oh, there miles we go, there of we go. prairie there we go, David. Uh, in Nebraska. Okay, David, we're done here. The sun is coming back. It's being regurgitated. Oh, and there's a star in the sky that we can see. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Well, Nick, will you say Fantastic. hello to the folks there at Carhenge in Nebraska for us? One of the most incredible things about this whole event playing out here in America, the first you know, total solar eclipse in 99 years traveling from coast to coast across this country. It's also allowing us to see these amazing places. You know, Carhenge right there in Alliance, Nebraska, the invention of a family during a family reunion. And now look, even Nick said he had to travel with an RV from Oklahoma City to make that happen in front of his eyes. When we come back, the shadow of the moon passing through Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, and Nebraska. There's still a long way to go. And as we go to break with our coverage of the great American eclipse, a look at some of the images that you've now sent to us. As I said at the top of the broadcast, go to abcnews.com. We'll tell you how to do it. Send your pictures, your videos. 
We want to experience this with you and with all of the incredible moments you've been able to capture as well. We'll be right back, back in a moment. And you are watching The Great American Eclipse 2017 right here on ABC News. You're going to get to experience totality over and over and over again <laughs> right here with us. I'm Amna here with Walt Hickey. How you doing, Walt? I'm good. Oh, Perhaps man. one day our scientists will find out what happened at Carhenge, but for now it's a mystery. <laughs> Speaking of scientists, yeah. though, um, well, we should point out, by the way, you guys, next up on the map of totality is Missouri. Missouri. Right? So we're going to go there live we're in just a, a little a second. dash of Kansas, I think, and then Missouri. Just a little right sliver. On, just a little sliver of that. Just a little taste. <laughs> um, here's what we were talking about before. This is something that fascinated us during our research. Yeah. Obviously, we know why this is all happening now, right? Yeah. Um, shadowing is one of the things you're going to learn about. A little bit of a, of a we'll lesson, get... a scientific lesson for you. Take <laughs> a look at this. So the shadow occurs in two parts, right? The penumbra and the umbra. Yeah. We've all learned these things recently. <laughs> the umbra is that really narrow one. The penumbra is much, much bigger, right? Yeah. So essentially what you're looking at here is you're looking at the reflection of the sun on the surface uh, of the Earth. Uh, it looks like a driveway potentially. And the idea is that uh, it, when the sun is going through, it's reflecting all over. So if you had one of those pinhole cameras, and I promise you we're going to make one of those today, <laughs> this is something. This is a series of what you'd be seeing. This is a, dozens of suns stacked on top of each other, reflection of it. It's just a real lovely shot. It's very rare that you kind of see this kind of So this is very cool. And you guys keep sending us your pictures yeah. and your comments on Facebook. Use the hashtag Eclipse. You can go to abcnews.com and send in those photos. We'll try to incorporate them here and on the broadcast. We've still got a little bit of ways to go. A big state's coming up now. Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, and the Carolinas all in the great American eclipse. Yeah. What else are you looking forward to now? Well, I, I've loved hearing the reactions of the folks who are seeing it. Because, yeah. again, like, like the earth goes cold. Like, the, the sun goes away. And this is, like, a visceral human reaction that we've had for, for all of human recorded history, right? Like, <laughs> we were going through some of the, in the research, right? We were looking yes. at some of the ways that people were dealing with this. Almost all of it involves yelling at the sun and, and inquiring it to go back. Sometimes a jaguar <laughs> is eating it, according to South American legend. Uh, uh, other ones, uh, your favorite one is in Togo, is that it right? It is. This is what I love. The, yeah. the myth in Togo went that the sun and the moon were fighting, and yeah. then the people would implore them to stop fighting. Yeah, just stop fighting. And then eventually they would all get along. And <laughs> I think that's kind of nice. We can all use that right now. Exactly. We can all use a little bit of that. So, like, again, if you are near the uh, sun, be sure to beseech it so that the, either the jaguar releases it, the Scandinavian wolf releases it, or, or perhaps they just stop fighting. So. <laughs> beseech it. Yeah. That's what Walt has to say to you. We should show people, though, you've got your materials here. You guys oh, yeah. stay with us here. We're going to go back to the network special in just a moment and live to all those places of totality across America. But coming up, yeah. you need we've got this. Four things. You need a pointy object. You need some tin foil, you need a nice little box, and then you need a white piece of paper. You get those, then we're going to start seeing some eclipses. <laughs> it's an instructional video and a live stream in <laughs> one. Just stay with us here. Take a look at the map right now so you can take a look at where we're going to be heading next in that path of totality. Remember, this is such a big deal, yeah. and we're seeing this question, these questions a lot on Facebook. It is such a big deal because it is going coast to coast in America. And there you see a live picture right now the Great American Eclipse. You're watching it right here on ABC. And stay with us, guys. We're going to follow it all the way across the country. And you're back with us covering the Great American Eclipse on ABC News. This is Charleston, South Carolina, just above where you know I'm standing right here. And we had been a little nervous here in Charleston. What a beautiful city. Uh, but I can look up with my glasses and I can see that really the sun is almost cut in half by the moon at this point. It's really an incredible sight. I, I can see why people are going essentially nuts across the country as they're witnessing this for the first time in their lifetimes, really, because for many, you know, they haven't seen this. And certainly if you did, it was 38 years ago, 1979, as Frank Reynolds said at the top of the program. But I, I should mention we are at the People's Building here in Charleston. and. It's an extraordinary building. Even President Taft came in, came at the beginning of the last century uh, to get the view of Charleston. It's the best view of this city. And so we're really looking forward to the progression. I'm not going to look up completely, obviously, uh, at this point because it's already underway. I do want to get back out to Matt Gutman because, Matt, that was just really extraordinary. And we give you complete credit for helping us to kick this off in such spectacular fashion. And we knew when we went to you initially and we could see the sun 
you know, shining bright as you were reporting in that it was going to be a spectacular sight that you witnessed. You know, David, people talk about it. They had mentioned that it seems like it's maybe twilight. But it went dark it's as if somebody shut off the light here, the temperature dipped, and the crowd here just roared with the light because nobody can ever fathom something this eerie. Now, one of the little kids I spoke to, his name was Logan, said that he was worried that the sun wouldn't come back, so he started crying. There's another reason for people to be crying right now, and that is this traffic jam that is brewing. Madras has a population of about 5,500, but there are 100,000 people plus who've inundated this town. And this traffic jam started precisely as the eclipse ended. People already had packed, gotten into their cars, and headed out. Some of them have a long drive. Where are you guys headed to? Beaumont. How far is that? Beaumont, Texas? Beaumont, North California. How far is that? About 14 and a half hours. And how long do you expect that to take you with this traffic? Oh, 20. About 20 hours. 20 hours? Was it worth it? 20 hours? Oh, yeah. Okay, worth it. I, it was worth it for me, too. It was one of the most incredible sp spectacles. Everybody's leaving here happy, even though they are braving this traffic jam. It took a lot of folks four hours to get in here, David, just to this location here at Solar Fest, and it's going to take them a lot longer to get out of here, David. But I think they're going with a, a smile, so that's all that really counts. David? I know nobody's honking for you to get out of their way. They're all in such good moods after what they just no. witnessed there. Matt Gutman, thanks me over to you. We'll yeah. <laughs> They're not going to run you over. You're Matt Gutman. Anyway, I love how Matt asked, you know, was it worth it 14 hours? And the whole family shot it through the windows. It was absolutely worth it. Uh, they, had, they had the clearest view yet that we've seen so far. I want to head out to Carbondale, Illinois, Southern Illinois University. T.J. Holmes is there. And there's a lot of focus on Carbondale because of the longest totality. And when we talk about long, this is such a fleeting moment across the country, but we're talking, what, two minutes, 40 seconds, TJ? Yeah, that's more than anybody else. We'll take it. And uh, there is a party going on here now, David. You caught me at a time where they just, they just put on Michael Jackson's Billie Jean and instructed the whole place to moonwalk. And people are moonwalking. You see some Girl Scouts out there in the middle of the field. But this is Saluki Stadium. 15,000 people were invited to be here. This place sold out, and now the seats are starting to fill up. And the reason this is such a big deal here in Carbondale, because this is the place where we are going to get the longest totality. Like you said, around two minutes, 41 seconds in this particular area. So that's why people came here. Now, the other reason this is the eclipse capital is because this is also considered the crossword, crossroads, I should say, the eclipse crossroads, because the path of totality for this one goes this way. The path of totality for the next one in seven years goes that way and Carbondale sits right in the middle the crossroads because literally the X marks the spot where both total eclipses we're going to see tonight or today and then in the next seven years are going to pass through here we did have an issue I have to let you know we can kind of get a shot because the sun's not out uh, we have a partial eclipse going but we got clouds in the area David that is going to be an issue people here are starting to get a little nervous that these could really cause a problem for us these clouds but hopefully they will break but again 15,000 people you got some suites up there that sold for 10,000 bucks they sold this place completely out now a lot of people would be very happy David to get the lights off right now and get the sun blocked because it's been about 95 degrees out here for the past couple of hours we've had several people absolutely have to go check in with the uh, some of the medical tents it is a blaze out here but now people are in their seats getting ready for the moment their moment to shine in what they are calling the eclipse capital david well we can't wait we'll check back in with you you got some time for those skies to clear a little bit not until 221 there max totality about 201 eastern 202 so about 19 minutes so hopefully those uh, skies will clear for you and, and that's a really important point that tj makes it's being called the capital of the eclipse because it's right in the path of totality now and it will be again in 2024 for a handful of states that will see this about seven years from now and we'll have that list for you a little later on in the special we're too busy dealing with this eclipse right now. When we come back, celebrating, of course, the great American eclipse, we're going to head to Kentucky, Tennessee. How will it play out there? The great American eclipse right here. Live coverage on ABC continues right after the break. Back in a moment. ABC News, the great American eclipse is sponsored by Mitsubishi. And coming up, a first look at the all-new 2018 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. Jay Bush and Duke here. And 
there is a shot up in the sky. You're watching the Great American Eclipse, currently underway, making its way across these United States of America. What's up, guys? I'm Amna here with Walt. You know what struck me about what TJ was just talking about in Carbondale, which yeah. is going to have the greatest duration there? Emergency services. He was talking yeah. about the, the people they have on standby there. These are huge crowds it's gathering in parts of the places that don't usually have huge crowds. Huge crowds. So there's 12 million people who currently live in the Band of the Eclipse, right? Right. You're looking at maybe half that just visiting. Like, so what you're looking at is uh, New Nebraska shut down trucking on, uh, on I believe, I-80. Like, yeah. like the, there's a huge like no effort trucks. underway. Yes. Like, if you look at the state of uh, Tennessee or you look at the state of uh, South Carolina, these things are, are really pretty much entirely covered by this eclipse. And, and if you're talking about highway safety, if you're talking about making sure people are hydrated, mm -hmm. if you're talking about how emergency services services can deal with an incident if there's no cellular service because of the huge influx of people. Like this has been a huge production for a lot of different places. Uh, I believe some people have called in the National Guard to get it ready. It's yep. always, like you got to be real safe out there. And again, we're about to come to uh, Missouri, which is going to have one of the biggest audiences. For um, you know place. what I worry about? What's Bathrooms. That? Oh, yeah. Ha all these people descending into places where there aren't usually all that many people. It's funny. The Porter the John Renters, the Porter John Renters in America, this yeah. uh, construction company that, that, for whatever reason, is the people to call if you need a Porter John. They <laughs> said, oh, yeah, no, we got a lot of orders. <laughs> it's, it's a busy weekend for that. So. Grand Teton National Park, which, by the way, is in the path of totality, said they ordered 2,000 additional wow. Porter Johns. So there you go. I and mean, I you're talking about like Idaho has 1.5 million people. They were thinking about like half a million people showing up to Idaho. Like, like this is a huge production. And they have the clearest weather in the country, it looks like. So so it could be a whole big deal. And it looks like the weather is holding in most places, mm -hmm. even over in, South, in uh, South Carolina where the eclipse will leave us. It looks like it is clearing up. So stay with us here. We're going to have live picture across the country. And if you're on Facebook, guys, keep sending yeah. us your questions and your comments. Send them in. Use the hashtag eclipse. Send us your pictures at abcnews.com. They're going to try to incorporate them in the broadcast too. And thanks to all of you from watching around the world, you guys. It's not the great American eclipse, but we have viewers from everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Again, it's a huge event, okay? People are coming from all over the world uh, just to come to the United States to see the this event. People chase these eclipses all over the world. It's a, it's again, it's a fantastic thing. It brings people together. You don't need to speak the same language to understand an eclipse. It's a real cool event. There's a reason we've been recording these throughout human history. There's a reason that some of the first machines that we ever have, like the Anakithra, are designed to predict these things. It's a, it's a, it's a real cool event, and, and honestly, it's, it's just a great opportunity for folks to come together. And it sounds like even if you haven't been able to make it to the path of totality and you're watching with us, it is still striking you how beautiful and amazing this is. Diego wrote in, it shows us the unity, vulnerability, and the majesty of our experience in the cosmos. Somebody else was writing, I can't find the comment now, that this was the only way they were going to let their kids watch it because they didn't want them yeah. out if they didn't have the right glasses. So we're here for you. It's lovely. Like, Earth is the only planet in this solar system that can experience an eclipse. We're the only planet that has a sun that's 400 times as far away as our moon is big. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Thanks for watching The Big Deal here with us. We're going to go back to the network special now anchored by Dave Revere. Keep watching here on ABC. Welcome back to live coverage of the Great American Eclipse here on ABC. That, of course, is the wedding party from Joseph, Missouri. Max totality at 2.07. So they are about a minute away. Eight seconds away from max totality there in St. Joseph, Missouri. Talk about a way to kick off a reception. We just want to listen in as this wedding party takes in total darkness after the marriage there of Cameron Coon and Samantha Adams. And as you heard earlier, Samantha has been planning this, that they would say their vows in this moment. So many people have come to Joseph, Missouri. There was an owner of one bed and breakfast there, St. Joseph's Shakespeare Chateau bed and breakfast. She had no idea this event was even going to happen until a phone call in 2014, three years ago, from someone in Spain. They wanted to bring their family to America and stay there. And that's how she knew there was this eclipse coming and that they were in the path of totality uh, there in Joseph. I want to bring in Dr. Walkowicz, who's been watching this live coverage along with us. And we know this is your first eclipse, actually witnessing it from the ground like all of us. And I'm just curious your reaction to watching day turn into night. For so many it's of us who really so never get the chance, obviously, to do what you do. It's absolutely incredible. You know, uh, as an astronomer, I've gotten to use amazing telescopes, but there's something really primal and amazing about seeing something 
a celestial event like this happen with the naked eye. And right now we have a couple of uh, clouds playing chicken with us, but I think they're just daring us. I think they'll go away um, because we're very, very close to totality. And I'm thrilled to actually have this opportunity to see the sun's outer layers, to see it as we never get to see it with our naked eye. So the crowd is really filled you know, in. No, we really don't. And yeah. I just couldn't be more excited. And folks at home are actually watching the live picture from St. Joseph. That was just a sliver of the sun left. And, and Dr. Walkowicz, you were talking to us about the corona, which is the outermost layer of the solar atmosphere. And just for folks at home, you know, this is something we don't see with the naked eye except for this. And actually, we've just seen we've just seen that diamond ring on the backside of the total eclipse in St. Joseph, Missouri, which is just another sight to behold. It's amazing. Um, you know, the corona really plays an important part for us here on Earth. That outer extended layer is millions and millions of degrees, and it's responsible for a lot of what we call space weather, the kinds of energetic events on the sun that send radiation and particles streaming at us here on Earth, interact with our own planet's magnetic field, and sometimes create aurora, or can even create deleterious effects like disruptions in telecommunications or GPS satellites. So this is not only a wonderful opportunity for everybody to come together, astronomers, non-astronomers, anybody with the ability to see the sky today and appreciate this wonderful event. It's also an opportunity to understand something and gain scientific insight that might help us predict those events in the future and help us better understand them so that we can shore up our infrastructure and remain safe. We want to stick with this live picture in the corner because the length of this is supposed to be about 2 minutes, 38 seconds. And I want to bring in Dr. Hakeem Olusheyi. He's in Casper, Wyoming, watching this uh, with us. He's, of course, at one of the official NASA sites, an astrophysicist himself. And, you know, we've just been taking in some of these things that we don't typically get to see. And, and to add to what we were just talking about, the corona is far, far warmer than the sun's surface itself. Is it not, Doctor? That's right. You can. Uh, it's about a million degrees and it's sustained indefinitely. So that's one of the big questions in astrophysics. How is it that the 6,000 degree surface of the sun can maintain this million degree atmosphere? And we know the basic outlines of the answer. It has to do with the actions of magnetic fields. Two processes, one that has to do with waves on the magnetic fields and the other that has to do with the process called magnetic reconnection. Talk to us a little bit about the shadow bands. You know, we're not quite seeing it there. We're seeing just a sliver of the sun left, and that really is dependent on the cloud cover in the area. But a lot of folks have witnessed this already over the course of the afternoon and the late morning, if you're watching us uh, in the west. But it's similar to those right. sort of, um, you know, those spaghetti lights in the bottom of a pool that you see, the shimmering in the middle of the summer. That's right. These shadow bands that you see that can be the length of a football field. What is, what is this all about? Yeah. Yeah, so just like when we look up at the sky and look at stars, the stars twinkle. And the reason why they twinkle is because as the, as the light passes through the Earth's atmosphere, the atmosphere has different layers, and those layers have different density, and it causes the light to change directions, and the light travels as a wave, so it can add to itself. And sometimes you get bright areas when it adds, sometimes you get dark areas when it adds. And so what we're seeing here on the ground is the thin crescent of the sun is almost like a star. It's almost a pinpoint of light and so that pinpoint as it travels through the atmosphere delivers these effects whatever it is it is absolutely stunning dr Kim olushe who's wonderful in casper wyoming right now obviously astrophysicists will be checking back in with you uh, doctor thanks so much i, I want to bring in meteorologist uh, ginger z who's also watching these images with us i know that uh, ginger is in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, which happens to be right along this route of totality. And Ginger, here in Charleston, I got to put on my glasses to check it out. I just want to do a little status check because we can actually see. Yeah, you can see right through the clouds there. It's like a, it's like partial sun already here. I'm curious what you're seeing uh, right there in Nashville. I, you know, David, I put my glasses on with you because I can't stop staring. Everybody around me, put your glasses on and just look at this. It is beyond the Pac-Man. You can almost look like the sun is now the crescent of a moon. So we've seen between clouds here some of the most beautiful visions already. I love this part of nature. I love this part of science. And it's, it's funny because everybody was kind of drinking and talking and then everyone started to look up.
and they said, I've got to take this in, this moment. And you know, we actually have a drone right here in Nashville so we can capture all of the parties on the rooftops that again have gotten a little quieter. The country music has kind of quieted down as well. We're less than 20 minutes away from totality here. We're also playing chicken with a couple of clouds, but we are, I'm, I can feel my heart beating, not because I'm on TV, but because I am so excited for this total solar eclipse. David. Hey, Ginger, I wanted to ask you about the temperature you know shifts I, I actually, that we had been told about. I can't about, hear you, you know? if you're coming in at all, but we, what you can see right now is lower Broadway. There's construction still going on because people are still having to be at work. As people were tweeting me, they said, I've got to adult today. <laughs> so they've still got to do their work. But let me show you around us. Everybody is glasses on. Oh, it is just stunning to see that yellow image with that moon so close to overtaking the sun. Again, going beyond our Earth, going beyond the atmosphere that we love so much. And just to let you know, temperature wise, we have seen a drop already here and we haven't even gotten to totality yet. 97, well, it might feel like 10 degrees, but it's actually been three so far. But we will see up to 10 to 12 degrees in some of these places, depending on how dry the air is. So David, what a beautiful sight to already begin to take in. And I cannot wait. Just a couple of minutes left until totality here in Nashville, Tennessee, right in the path, the biggest city. It's not gonna happen here, guys, for another 500 years. So we better get this in, get right? Get it while we can, get it while we can. can. The party is on, David. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ginger. And, and we know you, Ginger, you live for this. This is gonna be extraordinary. And the only thing that could sort of like calm the mood, well, there you go, there's some of the, the classic Nashville noise, but the only thing that can calm the country music for a time is just waiting for this impending uh, American eclipse. Next up, Carbondale, Illinois. I want to go back there because we had checked in with TJ Holmes, and this is the so-called capital of the eclipse. Not only are they getting it this time, but they're going to be in the route uh, next time as well. He was worried about the cloud cover, uh, and as you can see, five minutes, 24 seconds now to maximum totality. A giant, a giant crowd inside that stadium. Look, I can see sunshine on your face, TJ. I'm pretty excited. Well, don't get too excited about the sunshine, David. You hear the crowd getting excited right now for a particular reason. Let me just give you a shot of the uh, crowd here. They're looking up because this might be the only and best shot of it they get, David. I just checked in with a meteorologist friend of mine not far over. You see that big cloud cover? They believe it's going to take possibly another 10 to 15 minutes for that thing to get through. Now, that would mean we are being covered here right now at the exact moment of total of totality right uh that would be a problem because this has been ground zero this has been i should say the the capital as you've been saying for very good reason two minutes and 40 seconds the longest a period of totality that anywhere in the country is supposed to see you got 15,000 of your friends you've invited to a party and then they don't exactly get to see the show now there are still it's going to get dark here and they'll get that experience but to be able to look up at the sun and to get that experience well, folks are getting a little nervous here that they might not get that. Again, you see a little break in the clouds, that blue that you see. Meteorologist, a friend of mine over at the Weather Channel, Reynolds Wolf, said if that moves up a little bit, we might get a couple of minutes or maybe a few seconds. But right now, David, we're a little nervous about it. I want to bring in uh, Lucianne we've been talking to here. Come back in here with me. And, and the reason I want to bring her in, she said something to me a moment ago um, that really kind of startled me, but she wanted to know, if it, is it okay to go crazy and just scream because right now this is kind of disappointing. <laughs> we have this cloud just teasing us. There is like a tiny little gap. There oh my go. God, there I can go. see it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, bright enough that I could uh, use my safety glasses here. We can see just a tiny little sliver of the sun left. We are just moments away from totality. This is an incredible sight and the crowd is Going insane. Yes, and they're, go they're going insane right now because they know they might not get a whole lot. All right, you see, it, it is pretty cool to hear the crowd kind of uh, start to rumble the way they are, rooting for this uh, totality. But again, we're keeping an eye on these clouds. This might, unfortunately, David, uh, it, it's I'm sorry to say and sad to say, this might be the only glimpse here, just a few seconds and not the two minutes and 40 seconds. And doctor, you tell me, um, how does this change what you're able to study? if the clouds are covered. We'll still get dark here, still get cool, but we won't be able to see, and you guys won't be able to study like you thought you might. 
Well, from here at least, we won't be able to see the outer extended layer of the corona. I personally was most thrilled to see that. I think we might still see it. You know, uh, keep a positive attitude, TJ. We have a couple minutes here. There are some gaps in those clouds. You are absolutely right. And we can, again, see, uh, David, we, we might be getting lucky here, uh, actually, David. There is a uh, there is a break in the clouds that we're seeing. There's a huge, pretty big, it's pretty significant uh, cloud band, but we are getting a gap here, so we might actually get this totality here in just a moment. If you all can help me, I don't have the countdown necessarily when it's supposed to be uh, the total eclipse here, but we haven't, we haven't, it's starting to get a little dark. It's starting to feel a little different in the stadium uh, here, and we're starting to get that experience. Let's put the glasses back on here because we are getting that gap. And again, David, we're hearing the crowd get so excited because they know, they absolutely know this might be their only shot at it. They came here because this is supposed to be the longest stretch of time that we're going to get totality in the country David in the country people came here from thousands of miles around I'm only getting two minutes and 40 seconds and now I might only get 45 seconds that's uh you know, even in this moment if you look around you there's yep. plenty of amazing things to see the shadows um this is one of the underappreciated things the shadows become very sharp it looks really very strange um much different than anyone is used to seeing their shadow because usually that light is coming from all around you diffusely and here it's really a point source but we still have that crescent sun just for another two minutes. And everybody is cheering. I think the cheers Hey, Luciana, it's David Muir. Can you hear me? those clouds away. And, and David's trying to talk to you. Can you hear David? Hey, Luciana, yes. hear me? Go ahead, David. I can. You, this is just really incredible because, you know, in, in all of the preparation for the, this great American eclipse, TJ, you know what I'm talking about is that so many of the scientists said it all has to do with like a fleeting moment and whether or not a, a system is passing by with a particular type of cloud that's going to be stubborn. And you guys have you guys have brought us into the drama. You've got 45 seconds there and it all depends on you. And it's getting incredibly dark right now. We're we're getting a huge change in the light. And that little sliver is going away. It, it is, David. If you if you guys can see this, and they're they're instructing us, I know, in the uh, in the control room to put your glasses on. Um, but right now we have a pretty obstructed view of the sun. Right now, it's barely peeking through one little gap, but it's still pretty much covered by clouds. And frankly, I have these glasses on, and I cannot see a thing up there. Uh, we are hitting that moment of totality. So even if you can't see. Uh, the sun being blocked out right now. We're experiencing this all around us. It might, go ahead, my photographer here, he can show you this crowd. We got 15,000 people gathered out here for this party. And, and they're feeling these effects all around, this cool moment. We just turned to night, right? And people are taking this in. A lot of people do have the cameras out. A lot of people don't have them up at all and just are kind of in awe of the moment. And I said this earlier on Twitter, when this started, this seats being a work assignment. You just become a kid again. You feel like you're in third, fourth grade science class once again studying. So all around us, darkness has fallen without question. But hey, people TJ. are unfortunately not getting the experience of having these glasses on. Go ahead, my man. You know, we talked about this earlier. We mentioned in the areas in America where your mind is going to be blown and where your heart could be broken by whatever the weather system is above yeah. you. I got to tell you, you got a minute. 48 seconds left of max totality there in Carbondale. And as oh, folks goodness. at home are sort of feeling this moment with everybody in that stadium, just hoping for the cloud to pass because you see huge chunks of blue sky above you. So we're with you on this. I should mention for people watching our coverage right now is that this city is one of the very few cities in the path of totality just a few years from now in 2024. TJ had mentioned this uh, earlier. It's sort of a rare thing. You know, the next path, TJ, is going to be from the south in yep. Texas, coming across from Mexico into Texas and straight up to the northeast, almost the opposite of the diagonal we're seeing this time. Uh, well, David, I don't, I don't know if that was meant to, to comfort us here necessarily, but uh, yeah, we got seven years. <laughs> You're telling me I got to wait seven years, then I can come back here and try it again, uh, essentially. But that's what we have uh, in this moment. This was such a buildup. And I'm telling you, and you know, you've been covering and you've been talking about this all day and just what everybody put into this, what's essentially a once in a lifetime event for people. Here in Carbondale, it's a once in a seven year event. So if there was any place that wasn't necessarily going to see it and was gonna get cloud cover, maybe it's this place and maybe they'll come back again in seven years. But right now you can't tell that there's disappointment. All right, there we go. If you can, David, we're starting to get a little break in the cloud. If you can't update me about the clock, uh, we might be under 30 seconds left of uh, uh, totality. But we got a cloud that's really messing with us right now, David. Oh, we feel your pain there. 18 seconds left.
if anything changes, TJ, we'll come right back to you. As you mentioned, if any place they can handle the clouds or a moment of there it is. indecisive there it is. weather. Oh, you can see it. You can see a little sliver. Look, with there five seconds is. left, the last that's seconds. the gift to Carbondale, that's Illinois. <laughs> Look at that. Just a hint right there, just before it ended. What an extraordinary <laughs> gift right there in the last final few seconds. We'll take it, David. We'll take it. <laughs> All right, TJ, oh, right, thanks to you. We're going to come back to you uh, in just a moment. I want to get to Kelly Kentucky up next because Kelly Kentucky, Peyton Sandell is standing by. Peyton, you had amazing reporting from uh, Kelly Kentucky over the weekend. You know, it's known this particular place in Kentucky because of something that happened back in 1955 on this very day. Clayton, I can see the bright sunshine that actually pretends uh, an excellent moment on the way of totality. If you can see the sun, you're about to see nighttime, hopefully. That's right. It is rapidly getting darker here, David, as we approach totality. And you're right. This uh, eclipse happens on the 62nd anniversary of what many believe was an alien encounter just a few hundred yards from here, which is why we have a few little green men and some big green men here to join us here today. Uh, you know, this has been a such a celebratory mood here, uh, really a, a, a nationwide block party. People have been uh, coming from all over the Hopkinsville Kelly area. People have come from 47 states and 20 countries, even from Africa. There are visitors here. We met a couple from we met, we met a couple from Sweden. It is now getting much, much darker here. And I'm going to step out of the way and uh, put on my glasses for a second. Just a tiny, tiny sliver of the sun left here, David. And we well, Clayton, are in you've got darkness. 14 seconds. There it Clayton, is, you keep your eye to the sky there totality. with your glasses. You've got two seconds to totality. And just look at the reaction in Kelly, Kentucky. There we go. The length of their totality is about incredible. two minutes, 30 seconds to the end of their totality. You can see everybody with their phones there and their eyewear. David, you know, normally see, about 3,000 people in Kelly, stars. Kentucky. <laughs> Tens of thousands right, are there now to take this people. in. Yeah, about 32,000 in Hopkinsville, but they expected about 150,000 people to show up. And, uh, and I think they have, David. This is uh, one of the points of greatest eclipse. And they have been planning for this for a very, very long time. 10 years in Hopkinsville, and I want to talk to Angela, who's here from uh, college in New York, and, and you have been planning for a long time. Yes, my friend Mary and I, we've been planning since we were like 10 to come here. 10 years yeah. old you have been planning yeah. this, and you're, tw you're 20 years old now, so you've been planning this for a decade. A long time. <laughs> Why was it so important for both of you to be here for this today? Because we made it so long ago that, like, it just meant that our friendship would, like, last forever. We and even, we, we didn't even know we were going to be friends 10 years exactly. ago. We, we didn't think this was possible. We go to college in two different states now, so it's just wild that we're here. How does it feel to see this now? Now, that, now that you've oh. waited 10 years, what is it like? I literally have chills. Like, this is the greatest moment ever. You're shaking. Oh, my God, I'm shaking. Oh, oh this Honestly, is insane. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. It's a once in a lifetime moment. Wow. Like, Unbelievable. Oh. David, as I, as I look up here, we can actually see the planet Venus. The planet oh. Venus is in the sky, in the night sky, here at uh, almost 2.30 in the afternoon. We can see Venus at this point here in Kelly, Kentucky. It's safe to look, right? I love the fact that you can see Venus. Clayton Zedell in Kelly, Kentucky, talking about the fact that you can see stars, you can see planets, you know, in many parts of the country, Mercury, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, obviously the sun's corona, the brightest star in the Leo constellation, and as he just mentioned, Venus, in the middle of the day in Kelly, Kentucky. And, you know, he can't see this, nor can the little green monsters who dress, but we can. They've got about eight seconds left, and keep your eyes on that image to the left of your screen as we watch nighttime turn back 
in the daytime in Kelly, Kentucky. This is also one of the clearest moments we've seen since we came on the air about an hour and a half David, ago. The, the weather has been extraordinarily clear. We had a few high clouds, but otherwise crystal clear blue skies. The temperature dropped about eight degrees here uh, since, since earlier in the day. And All right, Clayton, I want to thank you. I see that some of the green question. monsters have reappeared. They have, and also if I can have the crowd part here. Guys, we can show you behind. We've got a little spacecraft that has landed uh, here in Kelly. So <laughs> spacecraft. I love it. Clayton, we're going to come back to you in just a second because I can't miss Ginger Z in Nashville. Ginger's been waiting for this all afternoon, and it's it's like it's approaching, isn't it, Ginger? One minute, 10 seconds to go. It is so close. It is so close, David. And here we are on top of Tootsie's rooftop. There is a cloud that is just above us right now. But I got to show you, everybody has poured out of the honky tonks and they are standing in the street ready for the moment of their life. We really are so excited. And I'm telling you, we are going to come down to the wire. We're playing chicken a lot like TJ was. I loved hearing all of the coverage. I've loved seeing it. Gareth, we've been watching everybody else. You came all the way from... We came all the way from the UK, Harryford in England, to come and see this uh, event. And we are, we are moments away, and that cloud is just so close. It's amazing. I, I, I dragged my Mrs. Rose uh, all the way, for, over 4,000 miles to come and see this. And what are you feeling right now? How, how are you feeling right now? Amazing. It's, it's like, I can't believe it. It's, it's a religious yeah. experience. It is. And yeah. it feels as if it's gone to nighttime. It feels very good because it's cooled down yeah, considerably. Yeah, that's sweat. Now we've got <laughs> the temperature in England. Yes, yes. Oh, it's yeah, like being back home. But we are so close. I'm telling you, David, this image above us is not yet stunning because it is almost heartbreaking at this point. But guys, we still have time. We've got just a couple of seconds yet. You can see the lights here in Nashville from our drone above. The party's ongoing. No matter what happens, you can feel the energy. You can feel the excitement. I can see the hue in the sky, the pinks, and the almost as if it is just twilight. <gasps> right? It's coming back. We're starting to see the edges of the clouds light up again. Oh, so close here. Can we see what you're looking at, Ginger? Oh, my goodness, guys. We are, and the light is coming back. So I think so far we've missed it. Are you guys doing all right? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah? Apparently. It doesn't matter. I think a couple of the libations may have helped. I can't hear you, David, um, but I will head back in until we see something again. As daylight reappears there in Nashville, but if there's ever a happy city in this country, it's Nashville. They can handle a few clouds, and you're helping to usher them right through that. You know, five state capitals, including Nashville today. Like the eye of a hurricane. I can feel the energy of nature, and I've been really fortunate to be in the path and, and be able to see very close up tornadoes in the past. And as people are describing what they're feeling, it's almost a strange joy when you see a tornado that's not affecting anyone, when nature has that power, when it has that energy. And I think that's what a lot of people are starting to describe here. Even uh, we can see the crepuscular rays coming through. You see those angelic rays coming through those clouds. The temperature has dropped already at least seven degrees just with the clouds and the eclipse that is passing. Even if we didn't see that full image here in Nashville, it was still such a gorgeous moment. And it's almost like we're at sunrise again right here. Right? Doesn't it? It's as if we passed an entire day. That was a quick day, everybody. That was fast. All right, let's head back into the Ginger Z in Nashville, Ginger. Our thanks to you, Ginger. You know, we might be up against the same challenge here in Charleston. I'm going to look up right now because I can't see a thing in front of me. But I can't see up to the sky. And I have to tell you, for the first time in about an hour, we can't see anything through the clouds. So we might be uh, faced with the same sort of uh, moment that Ginger had. But, you know, you saw what happened with TJ. You had that entire stadium filled in Carbondale, Illinois, which is actually going to see another total solar eclipse uh, in 2024. They're one of the rarities that are going to see this in just a, a couple of years. And then the sun came out at the very last second. They were able to see totality. So when we come back here, only one more state to go to view a total eclipse. South Carolina, here we come. As we take you to break, we thank you for sending in your pictures, your images. We're going to show what many of you at home have captured throughout the day. As our coverage of the great American eclipse, that's from the Vice President Dick Cheney with his hat on, capturing the eclipse. You can see the eyewear elsewhere. That's Senator Lindsey Graham taking a moment from Capitol Hill to take in the great American eclipse and some of the faces around this country.
little guys staying home from school today. You know, and across the South, they had a big dilemma where school has reopened, whether or not to take the day off or not. We know here in Charleston, they've allowed them to stay home today. But it was a, it was a dilemma for some schools. I say take the day off. This only comes once. It's been 99 years since we waited for this. The Great American Eclipse on ABC. Live coverage continues right after the break. Back in a moment. Hey, hey, it's the Great American Eclipse. Your coverage continues here on ABC. I'm Amna here with Walt, and Walt is demoing for you. For the couple of states that yeah. are left now, you still have time to build one of these. Now Real is quick, the time. Walt, how do you do it? Well, see, you find a box full of coffee from the room over there, <laughs> and, uh, and then, then you poke a small <laughs> hole in it. Uh, you put in a piece of white paper in the back over here, then you cover this with tin foil, and then you want to have like a little bit of a, a three millimeter hole coming through right here. You look at it from behind, so the sun would be that light behind me, and you can see the reflection of the light. You can actually try it out. You can see that light behind you. That you look, it, look at that instructional yeah. video, right? Oh yeah, you can totally see yeah. it right there. Right there. There you go. So you guys, the light. eclipse is cruising across the country. Heartbreak for the folks in Carbondale, oh Illinois. My gosh. But fear not. Keep your chin up, Illinois. Carbondale, it's coming back. The next solar eclipse, total the solar revenge. eclipse, seven years, right? Yeah. 2024. Hey, it's already made its way through Idaho, but Olivia Smith is out there. She made her way to the top of a mountain, yeah. you guys, to take it in with the crowd out there. Let's head back out to her now to see how folks are reacting. Olivia, has some of that joy and the excitement worn off now? Are people still talking about it? Hey, Amna and Walt. People are still talking about it. I mean, it's been pretty exciting up here on the mountain. We even have had paragliders taking Whoa. off. <laughs> during the eclipse and they're still doing it now so the mountain is a pretty oh good gosh. place to be more than 9,000 feet up in the air it was a great view i can't even describe the eclipse it was much cooler than i could have ever imagined and i'm going to introduce you to three people right now sean heidi and eric they're from they came from salt lake to see it and they brought their bikes why'd you guys bring your bikes so we could ride up here and witness this beautiful eclipse so they didn't want to take the chairlifts that are famous for being invented here. They decided to bike to the top. How long did it take you? Uh, we started around, we left the condo at 7 this morning, grabbed some coffee. We're, we were at the trailhead at 8, um, and it was about a two and a half hour uh, trek up. So, And did you guys make it in time for the eclipse? We got here at exactly 10.29, and I think it first started cresting around 10.30. So. Yeah. So how would you describe it? First, were you tired when you got to the top? Yeah, we were pretty, really pretty worn out. Yeah, pretty worn out. <laughs> a little winded. We were trying the, uh, to hustle to get here on time. So yeah, we were, we were pedaling pretty quickly. There, oh, even going faster to make it. <laughs> uh, we were a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of energy uh, when we got up here, though. People were pretty excited. And uh, that uh, uh, also a little bit of uh, pork loin that we had from the night <laughs> that before. Helped. That helped. That helped. <laughs> how would you describe what you saw? <laughs> I, once in a lifetime, I will never see anything like that yeah. again. That was incredible. Yeah. Like a 360 degree sunset with like blackout coming from up above, but like this really beautiful red and orange kind of all around the, the foothills and the sawtooth. It was gorgeous. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for chatting with us. Okay, back to you, Omno Malt. Hey guys, stay with us here. We're going to have continuing coverage coming up next on ABC. Back now with ABC News coverage of the Great American Eclipse. This is time lapse from Madras, Oregon. You can see how quickly day turned to night there and then back. And we saw just moments ago that massive traffic jam, people trying to get out, but they were smiling. Our correspondent there, Matt Gutman, asking the families, uh, some of whom had traveled 14 hours to get there, was it worth it? And they were unanimous from inside that car. We'll check with them halfway through the route back, maybe. But uh, they saw a sight to behold, as so many have across this country. I want to get back to uh, Ginger Z in Nashville. And I got to tell you, Ginger, we're facing a very similar. Actually, we're seeing the sun. We're seeing you know the what? sun. So the I'm going to look at the sun and up. toss the it to you. still in place. And I'm still hearing people say it was amazing. And it was that once in a lifetime event that happened for so many people. We got the darkness here. But I have to tell you, our sponsor Mitsubishi is taking full advantage. They took their brand new 2018 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross and put it in the path of totality just outside Salem, Oregon. 
They've taken cameras and put angles on this car with the eclipse in the background from all different angles. And I'm telling you right now, ABC is getting this exclusive look before, during, and after the eclipse. These images are something that are going to come together for a whole hey, campaign. Hey, listen, Mark, we have it a great a shot really here. We have a great shot in Charleston the eclipse of the sun. To come together. All right, David, we're going to head back to you now. Ginger, thanks so much from Nashville. Ginger Z reporting in from Nashville all afternoon. They got a little cheated. They weren't able to see the actual eclipse itself, but they saw it turn pitch black there in Nashville. I want to show you uh, the sky above me right here in Charleston because we're playing a, a game with the clouds here too. But you can see a sliver, a sliver of the sun you can see right through those clouds. And we are not far from max totality here. Uh, it's 2.38. We've got less than 10 minutes before it actually gets put to the test uh, here. But we're like so many communities across uh, the country who are waiting to see whether or not we'll see this, you know, this natural wonder. Uh, Carbondale, Illinois, at the very last second, the clouds cleared in that city and they were able to see it. Uh, in Nashville, right before us, it was a game with the clouds. But you're looking uh, live. That was just aerials of Charleston behind me, a beautiful city. And we are surrounded by big, puffy, white, sort of cumulus clouds on the lower end, the higher end. We'd have to ask uh, Ginger and Rob. But I want to go back to Columbia, South Carolina. They're not far, obviously, from here. We're the last state before this great American eclipse heads out to sea. And as we mentioned before, you know, these happen, you know, once a year, once a year. But we often don't see them because they're over water. And we were lucky this year. Let's go to President Trump, who is on the Truman balcony at the White House right now. They're getting ready to look out over the South Lawn. Because a reminder that so many of you at home watching us know that even if you're not in the path, that 70 mile wide path, it looks like he's heading back indoors, is he not? But even if you're not in the path, so much of this country is experiencing this today. If it's not a total eclipse, it's a partial eclipse, anywhere from 20% to 100%. Cities like Atlanta seeing you know 90% coverage. Uh, you can see them looking up from the balcony right there with their glasses on. Uh, the president behind that pillar there, there he is, coming out with Melania, the first lady, Melania Trump, emerging as they take in what is a breathtaking view. I hope somebody gave the president and the first lady some approved glasses uh, by NASA. We do know that South Carolina is the next and last state before it heads out to sea, and I want to check in with Rachel Scott who is in Columbia, South Carolina. Rachel, perhaps you can give us a taste of what we're up against too. What are you seeing? Hey, David. Well, I can tell you that, you know, skies here were a little bit cloudy. People were very concerned, but now those skies have cleared. We are getting a clear view. Very exciting here. The party got started here with a baseball game just behind me. The Columbia Fireflies were facing off against the Rome Braves. But of course, today is all about the eclipse and the totality of it. So I'm going to put on my glasses and get a look here. And we are almost there. I can tell you just a slither is left. We are uh, we are less than probably 10% here. And I do want to talk to Doug, who's standing next to me. Doug, this is not your first time seeing an eclipse. No, it is not. So tell me when was the last time you saw one? Well, the la <laughs> last time I clearly remember was 1970. I was visiting cousins in Boston. And it was a partial eclipse, but it got cold all of a sudden, as it is now. And we said, wait a minute, what happened? And we realized it was the eclipse. All right, so we do feel it getting a little bit cooler here. As you know, David, it is very hot, and the crowds are starting to cheer. Putting our glasses back on as we are getting closer and closer to that totality. Just a little bit of way to go here, and a lot of people were very concerned because the, the heat, extremely hot in South Carolina, but we're feeling those temperatures get a lot cooler as they are dropping down right now. And we are seeing it. We're almost there. You can hear the crowd here. So excited to see this full totality. And here we go. Just a little bit more to go here, David. And there we have it. We are in complete totality. Everyone is taking off their glasses right now. You can see. 
see a lot of kids yelling and screaming. They are very excited as we reach the full totality here in Columbia, South Carolina. The totality is expected to last two minutes and 30 seconds, and we are just taking this all in, basking in this right now. What a once in a lifetime opportunity for all of the people that are here in Columbia, South Carolina, that travel from all over the country and frankly, all over the world for this amazing and incredible sight. Rachel, we can tell you, you've got a minute 55 seconds left of max totality there in Columbia, South Carolina. You can see it on the on your screen right there. They're all gathered at the stadium. It's gone dark there. So many children and families gathered. And you know, we should mention that Columbia, South Carolina is one of five state capitals. This is so rare. This is why this is one of the most tweeted, they say probably the most viewed uh, natural wonder ever when it comes to these solar eclipses because of the number of populated cities that were in the path of this total solar eclipse uh, in America. You know, you've got Columbia, South Carolina, Nashville, Jefferson City, Missouri. You had you had Salem, Oregon, Lincoln, Nebraska, all these state capitals that were right in the path. And look, it is pitch black right now in Columbia, the capital, of course, of South Carolina. He said we could. As we look at the pictures, you can see the corona around the sun there. Rachel's smile as well. I want to bring in on the phone as we're looking at these pictures, Bonnie Tyler, because last I checked, Bonnie, your song from the 1980s was the number one song Hi. right now on iTunes. Did you ever think that was about to happen again? I, is, well, that doesn't... <laughs> well, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, it, it, it uh, hit the 300 million mark, and that was before the eclipse. Yeah. But it's amazing. And I just sang mention, it live with we should mention that and uh, fabulous. We should mention, on, as you can hear right now, turn around. Yeah. And again. This is one of those moments, this natural wonder we're experiencing, and me in a split screen with Bonnie Tyler is something I never thought I would witness. Total Eclipse of the Heart is now the most downloaded song on iTunes today, number one, for obvious reasons, and Bonnie Tyler. Great to have you on with us. We love the song in the 80s and we love it in 2017. Yeah. Have a great time on that cruise with that crowd. I want to show you Jim, what we're seeing here uh, thank right where you, I Jim am Steinman in, in is... Charleston. If you, if you look up, you can actually see right here in South Carolina, that is the view that we're looking at right here. As we now approach, we have a minute 35 seconds to the next totality, which is right where I'm standing it, of course, Charleston. We just watched it in Columbia, the state capital, and what an extraordinary sight they saw in that stadium. And I've got to tell you, I'm surrounded by an entire, an incredibly gifted crew, but no one is looking at me right now. They are looking at the sky as they should be. They are capturing the moment. They all have their glasses on. And we are standing on the People's Building, appropriately enough, here in Charleston. And I mentioned earlier in the program, President Taft came to this rooftop in the 1920s because it was one of the best views in this great American city and now we are taking in the great American eclipse the final stop in a big city at least uh, here in the continental United States before this great American eclipse heads out to sea it is pitch black you can hear cheers throughout the city you probably can't hear it at home but you can hear it as we stand on the rooftop of this building uh, we have gone into complete darkness and we have watched this play out in so many cities across this country before it even got to us. And there's nothing you can do to prepare for it. It is just breathtaking. People are applauding throughout the harbor. And anyone who's ever been to Charleston knows it's one of the prettiest cities in America. They were so excited and so welcoming, everyone who helped put this production together on this rooftop. And they are now taking it in If we can look up and we can see that we are now in a total eclipse. You can see the corona around the sun, which is one of those rare moments where we here on Earth with the naked eye can actually see that outer atmosphere of the sun, which we all know is a lot warmer than the sun itself 
and we're of course waiting for as it now then comes out of totality in about 56 seconds or so we'll see that diamond ring again and we've seen it play over and over again the diamond ring and the and bailey's beads obviously named after francis bailey the great astronomer who first coined the sunlight peeking its way through the valleys and the craters of the moon. And that's what creates those beads, that beaded effect. And here it comes. We've got 25 seconds left here in Charleston. And you can see how you know, blessed the folks of Charleston are and, and we feel, because look at the cloud cover on the right screen. You can see how many clouds are in the sky. We did not know whether or not this would work for us or not. But we are seeing it. We are seeing it. It's quite it's quite visible to the naked eye. We're watching this with so many scientists who joined us today, former astronauts. I want to bring in Dr. Hakim Olushei. Um, and as you take in this image with us, Hakim, what do you make of the fact that we have all been able to witness now the diamond ring we're seeing, the flash of light, as now darkness and nighttime turns back into daylight here in Charleston? What an extraordinary thing to witness. It completely is. And I've been chasing eclipses for over a decade. And typically, it's in places that are far flung around the world, Ghana, Mangaya in the South Pacific. And it's a small group of people that travel all over the world to visit these. But now, here we've had one, coast to coast, across America. The countries come together, and we've all celebrated, and we've all participated. It's like a big sporting event, except it's a big science event. I've got to tell you, Hakeem, I'm really struck by the luck that kicked in across this this continent from the West Coast to the East Coast, you know, with the exception of Nashville. And they were such good sports about it. But, you know, the clouds parted ways just when it mattered most in so many of these cities along the path to allow Americans to see something that we haven't seen in 99 years. You know, we saw the last one in 79, 38 years ago. Uh, right. That was only part of the country. But this is so unique. It's only the United States. You know, we haven't co-opted this solar eclipse. That's not why we're calling it the Great American Eclipse. We're calling it that because only the United States, the continental United States, is actually seeing this today. That's right. And what's amazing about it is that it goes from the West Coast to the East Coast. It is indeed a very, very rare event. And here we are all to witness it. And we're at a time where we have all this technology. And this means that not only the people who are on the line of totality get to see it, but it gets to go into homes all around the world. Everyone gets to share in the excitement. Everyone gets to share in the beautiful views. And if you're on the line of totality, you get the full experience. You get the experience, the sun going dark. You get to experience the air getting cool. You get to see the shadow of the moon racing across the countryside. I tell you, it's really something. And it's so amazing. You understand why people travel all over the world to see them. I'm one of those people. And now I think many more are going to be inspired to join us. You know, it really puts us in our place as far as our role in the cosmos, doesn't it? The fact that oh, we here really, on Earth are part of something it, it, it much really. bigger. That's right. We are. We are the universe itself, right? We are the universe become conscious and able to witness itself. And today we've witnessed something that's, you know, it, it's extraordinary. And, you know, we're really connected to the sun and the moon because it all started at what we call the solar nebula. And as the planets condensed, Eventually, us humans came about, and here we are to build instruments in order to see it and to witness it. And I have to say, Doctor, we feel lucky right here in Charleston as well to have witnessed the, the lineup of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun in the way we haven't seen in our lifetime. When we come back, our coverage of the Great American Eclipse continues as it moves out to see so many of you at home sending us your messages, your tweets, and your images. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Hey, are you taking... You are watching The Great American Eclipse, live coverage here on ABC. I'm Amna with Walt Hickey up here in our New York studio. We were feeling a little left out, so we went ahead and out. put these on, although they're pretty useless. But look, when you look up at the yeah. lights... When you look up at the lights, they're a bit occluded, you know? You, it, I think these are useful. <laughs> I'm hanging on to these. I'm hanging on to these at least until April 8th, 8th uh, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> So, Walt, man, at the end of that eclipse's path, coast to coast, all coast the way coast. from the Pacific Northwest to the eastern shore of South Carolina, it speeds up there at the end, right? Yeah. 
So right now it's actually accelerating as the shadow of the moon falls off the edge of the earth. So it's pretty fun stuff. <laughs> Hey, let's head back out to Missouri uh, in St. Joseph. Brad Milkey was out there experiencing that eclipse with some of the many folks who've traveled in to watch it from the clear skies there. Brad, what's happening right now where you are? Lisa, did you grab my glasses? Hey, you guys. Yeah, I'm here in St. Joseph, Missouri, and I'm joined by some of my new closest friends. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. <laughs> Now, I, I want to talk to you quickly just about what that was like, because it was cloudy skies all day today in St. Joseph. What, what did you guys end up seeing? Oh, that was just the experience of a lifetime. Uh, the way we watch the sunrise and 360, and yep. it was just beautiful, the total darkness. So, beyond and, what I could talk about. And we really got some pinhole light, you guys. You talk about pinholes and a way to look at the eclipse on the ground. That was like that with the clouds today, because all of a sudden, at that moment of totality, that crucial moment, we saw that sun poking through. It was a woohoo moment, and a lot of people peeled out before then, and so I'm glad we stuck it out. Hey, what's what's on your head? Oh, well, these are my uh, you know welding glasses. So in my spare time, I uh, arc weld and look at the sun. Are you serious? You brought yeah. the welding glasses? Yeah. I learned some science. A Corona is not just a beer from Mexico. <laughs> there you go, you guys. We're learning things about that. Wait, can I try those? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, you guys. All right, so here are the welding glasses. Remember, if you're ever if you're ever watching things, uh, another solar eclipse, there's got to be a welding glass 14 or higher, and that will make it so you're like me, and you literally cannot see in front of your face. So <laughs> let's take those off. What was this like for you? Uh, it was pretty awesome, man, especially the total darkness. Uh, never never experienced that before. So, And also when the clouds broke just in time to see the full eclipse happen, that was good. Yeah, was I, pretty damn good. And, and where did you guys come from again? Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Why? Why make the drive? Because it was supposed to be total down here. It was only 90% there. And there's a big, and as we were just seeing, I think there's a huge difference between yeah. even 99% yeah. and, and 100% because oh. at 99%, it was still just about this light, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Definitely. And back home for us, it was uh, raining and uh, full cloud cover, so wouldn't have flooding. seen it. Yeah. yeah. Well, so there you go, you guys. This is our crowd from South Dakota. They came all the way here for St. Joseph. They thought they might get washed out, but at the end of the day, we had the experience of a lifetime. You turn around on these flat plains of Missouri, and you saw a sunset that you'll probably never forget, and what was up in the sky was pretty awesome, too. That's incredible stuff out there in Missouri with Brad Melke. Thanks for being with us today, Brad. And back here in our New York studio, hey, we didn't miss out on all the fun. We yeah. have our own little mini eclipse in the palm of our hands. We got some stamps from the U.S. Postal Service. <laughs> where, okay, so, so get this, right? You see how it's just a, an eclipse, right? If you hold a finger or any other hot thing over on top of it, you see a moon. It's what? basically the exact same effect. It's the same thing, you guys. Over and over again, you can experience. I will say, we have we knew some folks who they tried to press it and it didn't quite work, which I don't know what oh. that says yeah. about them <laughs> and whether or not they're vampires. We'll so, figure that out. What was your favorite part of today? Um, easily Bonnie country. Tyler. Oh, yeah. One. I love that Everyone's Total saying, Eclipse like, of the Heart is making a comeback. Oh, it's <laughs> making a comeback. I sung that song on Friday at karaoke. <laughs> like, a comeback? It never left. <laughs> I think what we had some of the best seats in the house, by the way, oh, yeah. I will say. If we have to be sitting somewhere to watch it, and thanks to all of you for watching as well, we got to see totality again and again, and every time watching yeah. people just slack-jawed, staring up at the sky all and inspired. witnessing it. It's it was incredible. incredible. Yeah, like again, like... This is like this happens every year. Like this happens constantly. We're always going to get eclipses on Earth. It's a regular event. The thing that makes it so compelling is, is the folks who really go out there and really try to find this. And at times it was heartbreaking. Like, man, watching Carbondale, uh, right? Like that was that was fascinating. Because again, tough, they, tough loss, Carbondale. They get a, they get another try. They get another try. April eighth, twenty twenty four. We'll all be there. <laughs> Let's can keep you watching. imagine paying ten thousand dollars for some of those seats high yeah. up, as TJ said, and then only getting it for five seconds when you're supposed to have it for two minutes and forty one? It is, it, again, it, it's fickle, it's heartbreaking, but again, just seeing everyone come out, seeing, seeing this, uh, people from all over the world sprint to the 70 mile swath of America. It's, it's, it's pretty beautiful. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. And I know some of you guys are watching out there on Facebook. You've been sending us some of your photos using the hashtag Eclipse. I think we have some of those photos yeah. now. Because even if you're not in the path of totality, you are still experiencing it in your own way. Check out some of these. Oh, look at that little cutie with her glasses. Wow. Spoiler alert for the rest of Canada, uh, this is as dark as it got during the peak of Vancouver's, ooh, Vancouver's solar not that eclipse. Far off. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> not that far off, not that far off. But remember, this is, scientists are saying, probably the most watched, most oh, shared, yeah. most tweeted event 
just because so many people live millions in the path and still experiencing all the path. people are right nearby. They were all watching it. We're so connected these days through social media. Mm -hmm. and, and again, uh, this has been a great opportunity for America to showcase some of our great national parks and, th and all the beautiful scenery. Again, th those shots in Idaho were incredible, right? They were. Uh, and so it's uh, it's it's a real great thing. And I know Argentina's got one coming up. We yeah. have another one in uh, 2024. So Canada, hold tight because that's going to run up on uh, Northeast New York. So you, you'll probably catch some of that. What uh, was your favorite part so far? Oh man, I think just like seeing that first reaction out on the beach in Oregon. Right? Yeah. Like just every nobody really knew what to expect. Nobody had seen the social media burst yet. Like like we haven't had that in years, in decades, and just kind of seeing that immediate rush and that immediate like the chill that kind of ran through the crowd and how they experienced it. I, I love, love that. seeing all the little kids too, by the way, the who are experiencing this, and it's like science Rachel, coming to life in, in front of them. In Columbia, South yeah. Carolina, that ballpark was just must have been a great place to be. It must be nice to watch together too, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a whole family thing. Again, this yeah. is the kind of thing that you remember for the rest of your life. We hope so. And we hope you remember watching here with us as well. We're going to take you back to the network special and then stay here with us. We're going to hit back all those places where the Great American Clips visited across this entire country. 3,000 miles, 90 minutes. Thanks for being here and watching with us, guys. Stay with us here on ABC. You're watching our coverage of the Great American Eclipse. It was World News Tonight anchor Frank Reynolds in 1979 promising we'd be back to bring you this event. We certainly didn't know we'd be the ones to keep his promise, but we've been honored to share this great American eclipse with all of you at home. I'll see you on World News Tonight. First out the door when it matters most. For more than a decade, he's been right there, everywhere. And when American jobs are on the line, he leads the charge. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast, and we thank you. Hey, you're watching ABC's live coverage of the Great American Eclipse. I'm Omni here with Walt Hickey. Thanks for being with us, guys. Let's head back out into the field. What do you say? We've got people across the entire country who've been watching the Path of Totality unfold live. Let's go to our colleague Steve Osinsami, who joins us live from Atlanta, Georgia. Steve, tell me what it was like there. Well, it, 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 it's kind of like a, a sunset, but not a sunset because we had about 91% of the sun covered. I call it a funky sunset. Let's make that a hashtag. Um, there were probably several hundred people who were lined up. We're right now inside the Fernbank Planetarium, the Fernbank Science Center in Atlanta and Planetarium. There are still people in line trying to look at one of these two telescopes that are trained on the sun. Uh, and people have been coming in to get a good view. This is a safe thing to do. Um, there been a, 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 there's been a long line here all day. And I want you to take a look over here. There is a live feed that they have oh, wow. of what the sun looks like right now that has been going out online that people have been able to see and that people who are waiting in line can see. And I got to say, for all the talk, for all the talk about being in the totality, we still got a pretty good view here. <laughs> you, know, you didn't have to drive that far. You could stand right outside your door and see uh, the eclipse. Uh, there weren't the, the, the throngs of traffic that people had to go through. Uh, I had a friend who texted me. She's, she said that she thought about bringing her kids here. And I said, you know, you had the better view at your house because you didn't have to worry about parking. Uh, so, you know, for, uh, this is a wonderful event for so many people. And, and I got to say, so I remember the last time this this happened, I was in grade school, I think, and I remember thinking back to that. I remember it getting dusk, but remember thinking, what was the big deal? As an adult, seeing it, it's a little different because, like I said, it, it, it wasn't quite a sunset. Uh, it looked like, uh, you know, you, you, you pressed an Instagram filter. Uh, over, over the, over the what you could see, and it changed into a Morrow or Nashville or one of those Instagram filters. Is what is what everything <laughs> looked like. So, we are still looking at the long crowds here that are still trying to get a view of this because there is still right now. I would say that looks to be what I want to say about maybe uh, forty percent, thirty percent showing. Yeah. Uh, and so this event is still going to go for some time for residents here. There's still time if you haven't seen it to again, step outside your home, look up at the sky, and enjoy the show.
There you go. Just because you're not in the path of totality does not mean you cannot enjoy this. Steve Osinsami, live for us in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks, Steve. Let's head over to Kentucky. Clayton Sandell has made some new friends in a town called Kelly, where he's taken in the eclipse. Clayton, Clayton take it away, my man. <laughs> This is, this is so me, right? This is like a tailor-made assignment. We are, we are here at the Kelly Little Green Maiden Days Festival, and you're probably asking, why aliens? What do they have to do with an eclipse? Well, yes. here's the deal. 62 years ago, a lot of people here in Kelly, Kentucky, believe that aliens actually landed at a farmhouse just a few hundred yards that direction uh, and terrorized this local family for uh, hours one night. Uh, on August 21st, 1955, uh, and it made this town famous. So here we are. We're at the Kelly Little Green Men Days <laughs> Festival, and uh, but you know, even if you don't know the story, you do know the story because it actually inspired Steven Spielberg to make a movie. Uh, or try to make a movie called Night Skies, and he ended up not making that one, but elements of it ended up in E.T. the Extraterrestrial okay. in 1982. So, oh, yeah. so I'm going to show you around. Guys, hang here for a second. We're just going to walk. Jeff and I are going to show you around. This is, uh, this is it. One of the key attractions here is this nearly 40-foot diameter spacecraft that they built uh, not far from the uh, purported uh, landing site. Now, here's the thing. There, there are these, there are these uh, you know, uh, skeptics, those uh, you know, pesky skeptics out there who say that uh, Maybe these aliens showed up in a uh, bottle of Kentucky moonshine, <laughs> but, but you don't want to say that too loudly around here because people really do uh, believe that, uh, that this happened. But uh, none, nonetheless, there, there was no evidence, I believe. See, the truth is out there, guys. The truth is out there. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they started this festival a few years ago, and they usually get about, uh, three, they say about 3,000 so, or so people over the weekend. This time they expected around 20,000, obviously, wow. because this is one of the points of greatest eclipse. So yeah. uh, they had a lot more people here. They've been planning for this. Just down the road is the town of Hopkinsville, and they told us that uh, they started planning for this eclipse 10 years ago. That's when they got the first call from uh, an eclipse enthusiast who uh, told them that this is going to be happening. So they hired an eclipse coordinator last fall, uh, and they have been getting ready because they are 32,000 people in this town. And today, their estimate went as high as they, they were expecting as, as many as 150,000 people. So not, not just people, they really alien had to Americans as well as I saw Jar Jar Binks. We don't need people. Aliens, all people's sorts. Guests. Yeah, it takes all kinds <laughs> from, from all over, from, from galaxies near and far. And uh, 47 different states people came here from and uh, about 20 countries. We talked to a couple this morning wow. from Sweden. Uh, people came from Africa, from Tanzania. So... Uh, you know, they, they came all over and they got to see, you know, a, a spectacular sight. The thing that blew me away is that when the sky went dark and we saw that corona around the sun, uh, you also, also, also could see just all of a sudden appeared the planet Venus uh, just to the, uh, to the right of the moon, so, uh, of the sun and the moon. So it was a really uh, remarkable experience. Everybody here just uh, had a great time. There's been such a celebratory mood. Really, everybody has been so nice so into this and uh you know the question now is did any aliens come back during this this uh, eclipse and you know in this crowd how can you tell <laughs> well misa thanks you very much clayton <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come on back, and I know that uh, we have Olivia out in uh, still in Idaho with one of the best views of the day. Olivia, how's it going? Hey there. Yeah, it's been so beautiful out here today. There have been so many people. Tickets were limited. They sold a bit more than 1100 and the party is still going. The eclipse came and went. It was awesome, and now they have some music. They have some food, and we are here with people from Seattle and locals. We have Jim, Caden, Hillary, and Brad. What do you guys think of the eclipse? Oh, Sessions. incredible. Never seen anything like it. And you came from Seattle. I did. I did. The eclipse was amazing, and to see my best friends, my wife got totally left out of this. 93% is not the same as this. It was phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. And what did you think, Caden? It was good. It was good, right? <laughs> what did you think, Hillary? Uh, I thought it was amazing. I saw one when I was back in high school in 78 or 79, and it was on a soccer field at my school in Tacoma, Washington, and this is so much better. 
yeah. it's fabulous. <laughs> it really was spectacular. And the, moose, the motion of the moon over the sun and just seeing the changes as it happened and the change in the light was, we were all remarking over how dramatic the change was because we went from full daylight to this odd dimmed sunlight but kind of still eerie. from above it was really eerie and just beautiful hey olivia uh Could we've been seeing all the visuals any oh hey we've been seeing all these visuals out here in new yeah. york what we want to know is what did it feel like out there did you feel a temperature change humidity any any kind of huge effects that you kind of felt that we weren't able to get on camera yeah, absolutely. They're asking about the weather. So I have to say, it did feel like the sun was fighting the eclipse. It was really hot. It was really bright at first. It almost knew like it was going to be eclipsed, didn't want to be eclipsed. Then when the moon came, I don't know about you guys, but I was really cold. Yeah, it, got, yeah, it dropped yeah. about 20 it, degrees. We had to layer up, we had to layer up big time. Up. Yep. It, was, it was really dramatic. And the change in temperature was, it was yeah. amazing. You said about 20 degrees, you felt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah to put on my we put our coat. down jackets. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> I think I wasn't expecting that dramatic shift. Were you guys expecting it? No, we not at all. About it, so, right. Didn't but then, it. But yeah. And the shadows and everything were so much different. Yeah, it the just, shadows got darker. Oh, yeah. It was, it you was unbelievable. you experienced it, you, you just can't anticipate what it's really going to be like. It was spectacular. And I have to say, it was in that uh, maybe a moment of a few minutes that you really felt the temperature drop. It was definitely gradual. It wasn't seconds. It was minutes. But it wasn't... Yeah, and it was yeah, cold. It, was. it got it was. windy too, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did it feel like night? It's kind of hard to describe. It didn't feel like day or night. It was it like did. a twilight that wasn't exactly twilight because the sun, the angle was different and the, the light, the character of the light was different than yeah, twilight. I've never experienced anything like that before. No. Yeah. It, it, I'll it never forget surreal. it. I'll tell you that. It was Once surreal. in a lifetime. Yeah. So cool. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thank you, Kaden. So yes, yeah, so we're up here on Bald Mountain. Again, we're more than 9,000 feet up, and people did take those chair lifts to get up here, which I think is really fun because they were invented here in Sun Valley. All right, the party is continuing out there, and Olivia is oh. getting a hug from one of her fellow <laughs> Eclipse watchers. Actually, that was almost better than the Eclipse. That was <laughs> Bringing people together. That's what this is all about. This is what it's all about, yeah. right? It's a beautiful thing. Everyone's so loving after that Eclipse. Um, let's see if Rachel Scott gets any hugs out there. I bet she will. <laughs> Rachel is in Columbia, South Carolina. She was hanging out with folks in a baseball stadium watching the Eclipse unfold. Rachel, take it away. Hey there, on Moon Wall. Well, the celebration definitely continues here in Columbia, South Carolina at the ball game. Like we mentioned, the Cumbria Fireflies are facing off against the Rome Braves. But I got to tell you, the Eclipse was the star of the show today. And what a feeling, what a rush when we got to see it reach full totality. Everyone was a little bit nervous because we did get some cloud cover. But I got to tell you, it was amazing. I mean, what a feeling to see one, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I do want to bring in this couple right here. Ken and Keith, Sister they're Matt. celebrating their 41st anniversary. Very Congratulations, nice. guys. Thank you very much. How does it feel to well, witness the eclipse, the reach totality center. on your anniversary? Thank you. Well, I mean, that's amazing, but it was kind of emotional. It really took me by surprise. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And I think for me, the biggest thing for me was that it actually got cooler. So on then wall here in Columbia, South Carolina, it is very hot. I mean, we have been in the 90s. They're from here, but this L.A. girl was fanning herself, drinking lots of water, trying to stay hydrated. And when it did reach totality, the temperatures did shift. It got significantly cooler. Did you feel that too? Yeah, they, we had read an article that said that it might drop as much as 10 degrees, and it certainly felt that way. Yeah, it did. It was outstanding. It was very cool, and we did take off our glasses for a chance to see it. Just the moon reach complete black, complete dark, and be a complete blackout. I mean, how exciting is this to know that this is like coming back to South Carolina until 2078? Yeah, I probably won't be seeing that. <laughs> we'll keep our hopes high. We'll keep our hopes high here. Rachel Scott, so like I said, so much. people. This has been a ton of fun. So we want to hop out to St. Joseph, Missouri, uh, where we got Brad Milky in the airport. Thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, Brad, uh, can you get us? Uh, what's going on out there? Brad? Hey, guys. Yeah, I hear you. And we're here in the campground area of Rosecrans Memorial Airport. And people here have been camped out uh, for several days. And now you see all around us, all this goes away in an instant. There are cars making their way down the highway. And let's see if we can chat with some of these guys who are, who are loading up their car right now. What's, what's your name? Joe Drennan. 
Joe, and what was it like? Tell me, tell me, walk me through that moment yeah. because it was cloudy here most of the morning. It was mostly yeah, it was cloudy, and then it started raining. Um, so we yeah, we we set up and uh, it was cloudy. We we had some glimpses, you know, during the uh, the partial eclipse. And I remember the first time uh, the sun came out, and you could see the the it looked like Pac-Man, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, people were clapping and just really enjoying it. And then, uh, it, like, not even ten minutes before the full eclipse, we were in the car because it's raining. And uh, yeah, we came out and then, yeah, just uh, I, um, we brought probably like at the, you know, during the eclipse, I think we got maybe ten seconds of uh, actual, you know. So you're slated yeah, for yeah. two minutes and thirty-eight seconds, but you'll take the ten seconds. Yeah, we'll take the ten seconds. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you said it was like it was. It, Tell me about the atmosphere. People clapping, cheering. Yeah, people were really excited. I could, you could tell it was uh, just a lot of energy, and people were, uh, yeah, everybody was just kind of blown away. It was incredible, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And so now, how much does this get you excited for the next one? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, like I, uh, I was saying that earlier, that I, uh, um, I'm i already planning for the 2024, and possibly if I buy a home someday, that's uh, I'd like to buy it in the path of the eclipse. That's, yeah. the, that's the deal, you guys. All right, we're going to hold you to that, <laughs> Joe. Thank you so much. What, what are you loading in here, by the way? What's going into the car? Ah, uh, just some coolers. We brought out some food, general, like camping stuff. We had a tent. <laughs> we brought guitars, you know. He, he's a musician. I, li I like to play a little bit, yeah, so. Okay. And, and can you walk me through that moment when, because it gets dark quick. Like, if you were not experiencing this, the difference between 98, 99% of the sun being covered, where it's still pretty light, and that darkness that just descends like that. What was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty amazing. Um, it was, it kind of just went from, this being normal, I mean, the cloud cover, there was already a little darkness, but then it just started fading right to like nighttime and the whole horizon started going to the way it looks at sunset. And then it was just completely dark. And right. it was, yeah, I mean, not, you know, not completely dark, but dark. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so now where are you guys going to? Where is all this stuff heading back to? Uh, back to Austin, Texas. To Austin, Texas. How long is that? Uh, it's around 12 hours. All right, around 12 hours, you guys. So we'll Whoa. let them get packed up. They've got to make their way into this huge line that is already formed right now. Traffic inching along. And that is why you already see some people uh, just hanging out because they know they're not going anywhere. Some of them might even camp over, over tonight. But really, the climax has passed. Everyone had this incredible moment. And a lot of them just still chilling out, enjoying the view. That is smart. I would tell you, I, I would be out there too. You just hang out a little just bit camp longer, out. right? Post up. Why not? It's already a party. Brad Melky live there in St. Joseph, Missouri. It's been a party online too, right? It's Even if great. you couldn't make it out to the Path of Totality, you've been sending us your pictures using the hashtag Eclipse. <laughs> Check this out. Those welding helmets. That's great. <laughs> Let's see if we have some more here. Well, what? <laughs> what is with the welding helmets? This is great. This is great. Well, yeah, again, these uh, these eclipse glasses are just uh, similar to that. You need to block out almost all visible light, and welding helmets accomplish that. Another uh, another dog that he's just having a great time, you can tell. Dog is <laughs> like, I don't understand what's happening, but this is oh, pretty that's cool. wonderful. And yeah. Adam Floyd there trying to see the eclipse. Yeah. He's a little confused. No one else around him wearing their glasses, nope, no, 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 though. No, no, no. <laughs> Mm. Gonna go Flag ahead and you should have done that. And here is your prefer preferred viewing the method, The best way to right? watch it. Yep, you don't need to, no, no goofy goggles, none of that kind of stuff. You just need a random cereal box that you found in the recycling, and then you can watch the eclipse. Brian Harris Brian playing Hines. like a champion today. Nice. All the way up. Hashtag eclipse. <laughs> I've seen it, he says. Oh, wow. And Taylor Marie, where is this one? Oh, uh, we don't have a location on this we one. We don't have a location, but uh, ATX? Ooh, I don't remember who that is. Not but hey, sure. We have people making real estate decisions based on the site of the next eclipse, based that on their experience. This one feels ill-advised, I'm going to say, but I, more I power know. to you, <laughs> guy that Brad Milky was talking to, because that is dedication and excitement. Yeah. And there was a lot of that today. There's a ton of that. Again, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, only if you want it to be. Like the United States is having another one in 2024. That's right. right? It's a great opportunity. Uh, again, the the. I don't know, the, this even greater American eclipse. I don't know what their branding people are going to do this time, but uh, <laughs> I don't know how to top this one, the great American eclipse. But April 8th, 2024, Texas all the way up to Maine, uh, hitting, again, a whole swath of the country. There you go, guys. Make your plans now. 2024, mark your calendars, book your hotels now. Carbondale like gets part two. Yeah. <laughs> prices <laughs> may go up. <laughs> Where are you going to be for that one, you know? Where am I going to be? Uh, Carbondale. I want to see I want to see a revenge of them. I want to see yes. them get back. I want to see them have a big, beautiful eclipse over the course of it. Oh, man, we'd love to see that. Yeah. Carbondale, we love you. Heartbreak. Heartbreak today. You but thank so you <laughs> to all of you out there across the country for watching with us. Walt Hickey, Omni Navaz. This has been the Great American Eclipse. Thanks for watching. You can yeah. always go to abcnews.com if you want to go back and relive some of all the wonders. Relive the magic.
Thanks for watching. Bye.